available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I You're consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice. got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Jess. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm... Tonight on Prime Time, Governor Kemp calling for more money in the pockets of teachers. He detailed how much the teacher raises her worth in his state of the address. And new live for a shuttered Bankhead restaurant thanks to the effort of two well-known Atlanta entertainers. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. On this Thursday night, we have learned that a murder suspect killed during an attempt to serve a search warrant was only 19. The officer involved shooting unfolding this morning on Chasebrook Drive in Powder Springs. The GBI says Samuel David Mallard was wanted on outstanding arrest warrants for murder and aggravated assault with intent to rob. M Mallard also has a history of impersonating police officers with at least seven arrests before he turned 18. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey breaks down what we know tonight. For several hours today, investigators with the GBI focused on the roadway behind me here and specifically that red car, which is boxed in by cars from the Cobb County Police Department. We were told that is where the officer involved shooting took place this morning as officers attempted to serve that arrest warrant for murder. In the middle of Chaseway Circle near Powder Springs, double digit evidence markers covered the shooting scene where Cobb County Police confirm an adult male, a suspect in a murder case, was shot and killed. The red car in the center of it appeared to have two bullet holes in the windshield and a shattered passenger side window. Before the shooting, one man living on Chaseway Circle says he heard officers yelling at someone to get on the ground. Deborah Ingham says she heard a quick series of gunshots that one of her neighbors witnessed. She was walking her dog and she saw uh, the police shoot him. Cobb County Police ended up here as part of an investigation into several crimes. Series of violent crimes to include a murder. This investigation has been ongoing for several days. Cobb County Police Chief Tim Cox says while trying to serve a warrant this morning, his officer shot and killed one of the murder suspects. We have a sleepy little neighborhood. It's just, it's wonderfully quiet. And so to hear that is surprising. And while Chief Cox would not discuss the specific crimes connected to the ongoing investigation from his department, he did confirm their case is not closed. Uh, we do have some of the suspects in custody. Uh, it's exactly uh, who they are or ages, I'm not going to disclose right now. There are other suspects that we, we're in the process of uh, interviewing and looking for. Several neighbors we talked with say they do not know who was involved in the shooting this morning, but they tell me that red car that investigators have been focusing on, they've never seen it on their street before, so they at least are assuming that the person involved in the shooting did not live in their neighborhood. The Cobb County shooting is the fourth officer involved shooting the GBI has investigated and we're only 16 days into the new year. Last night, a man was shot and killed by police in Lawrenceville. It happened at the Wendy's on Scenic Highway. Police say that workers called them about a man who had a beer and he simply would not leave. When an officer showed up, he became angry, fought the officer. Witnesses say 47-year-old Albert Lee Hughes 
grabbed a chair and started attacking the officer. We're told the officer used his taser. It was ineffective. The officer then pulled his revolver and killed him. So on Monday night, while a lot of folks were celebrating the national championship win, we were tracking some showers that were moving through the area around midnight that caused some damage on the south side. The National Weather Service went and surveyed that damage, and they revealed that th we had a couple of brief tornadoes there on Monday night. The first one here in Pike County, this was Monday just before midnight around 1151. It was an EF zero tornado with wind speeds around 80 miles an hour, and it had about a one and a half mile path link it linked that caused some damage uh, to some trees and also some buildings there. And then after it moved over the line into Spalding County, it touched down again around 220 as an EF zero with wind speeds of around 85 miles an hour. It had a about a third of a mile link that uh, caused some damage even uh, it took the roof off of an outdoor shed out there as well. No one was injured. There were no fatalities with it. But yeah, a couple of brief weak tornadoes came through on Monday night. Stay with us. We have another round of rain moving in for the weekend, but no real storm threat with that. We'll give you the timing in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Topic our speed feed, a woman possibly forced into a van. And now Atlanta police say they need your help. APD says they received a call from a witness who says she saw two men take a woman from the passenger side of an infinity and then force her into their white work van. The incident took place this morning on Moreland near Custer Avenue in southeast Atlanta. Investigators say the men took the infinity and now they are looking for that car and that's where they need your help. There's some distinct markings to look out for. The infinity has a temporary tag and the gas filler door appeared to be either missing or painted black. Anybody with information is asked to call APD. A group of thieves moving fast, breaking into 26 vehicles within just two hours last night at different apartment locations and hotels in Gwinnett County. Take a look at these photos of the three suspects. Police say they got into the cars by smashing the windows and then we're taking wallets. Police are asking people to look out for a black SUV, maybe a Jeep Cherokee with blacked out rims and a long sticker on top of the back window. Man has been indicted for the murder of an internationally known UGA professor after she was found dead next to a hot tub in Baldwin County. Marcus Lillard was charged in May for the murder of Marianne Shockley. Another man who was there at the time is the one who called 911. Investigators say they spoke to him shortly before he killed himself at the scene. We spoke to some of Shockley's former students who said she was a wonderful woman, strong and talented. To hear more about her life from those who knew her, you can read our story on the 11 Alive app. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts is taking his place as judge in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Senators walked up in groups of four to give their oath to do impartial justice. They will be acting as jurors. This is all they heard uh, was the two articles of impeachment, and they were read aloud yesterday. President Trump solicited the interference of a foreign government, Ukraine, in the 2020 United States presidential election. It was a ceremonial start to the trial, but the work starts Tuesday with the opening arguments. Senators still have to decide whether to allow new documents and witnesses into the trial. And there are signs the investigation work is far from over after a new report from the Government Accountability Office determining that the president broke the law by withholding aid money from Ukraine. We will have more on the findings of that report coming up. At the state capitol... Governor Kemp says he plans to give school teachers another pay raise. He did not mention tax cuts or how the state might fix a revenue shortfall that could make those teacher raises problematic. This came during the governor's annual State of the State speech today. 11 Alive's Doug Richards was there and has more. The governor mostly steered clear of divisive issues. He did briefly mention the state's controversial heartbeat abortion law passed last year, but he used it to launch into a crowd-pleasing pitch to change the state's adoption laws. As a pro-life governor, I believe we need to protect the unborn and the born. Governor Kemp says he wants to make it easier for Georgians to adopt children, tripling an adoption tax credit to $6,000 for parents willing to adopt. Kemp also called for more money for school teachers, pitching a $2,000 raise for all public school teachers on top of a raise approved last year. Let's give our educators another well-deserved pay raise. He's made the promise. It is up to the rest of our politicians across the state 
to stand behind that and value public education as much as he has shown that he does. Former Governor Nathan Deal was among the luminaries in the audience for Kemp's speech, along with Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Senator Johnny Isaacson. Retired Senator Johnny Isaacson was also in attendance. The governor promised to create a Parkinson's disease research project at UGA in Isaacson's name. Kemp also backed a cause at the Capitol to eliminate surprise medical billing for out-of-network treatment. Democrats said they'd back that effort, but also called it insufficient to help Georgians lacking health care insurance. The answer was full Medicaid expansion, and we have not done that and have not shown that we're going to be a willingness to do that. And so the concern is that we're actually just providing a Band-Aid on a very serious health concern that are facing all of our Georgians. The governor did not mention the film industry or the state's generous tax credits, which have come under fire from two state audits released in the last week or so. A heartbroken wife, emotional hours after her husband was killed in a hit and run in Metro Atlanta. The ordeal that led to the suspected driver's arrest. Don't forget, we're streaming right now on 11 Alive, the YouTube channel. You can subscribe. You can join the conversation in the community section. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time right after the break. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About that. Reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy. He took my husband away from me and I don't know how I'm gonna live without him. A family's heart torn from them in a split second. Yesterday morning, a hit and run driver killed Chris Macon in Cobb County's family is in pieces right now. They spoke with our John Shurek in an exclusive interview you will only see here. He was cradling his dying father in his arms as the driver who had just struck his dad was running away moments after asking him one question. It happened so fast. He asked if I was okay. I turn around, I run to my dad and I look back and he's gone, the horn's blaring, and I mean, how do you have that little of responsibility for your own actions? Isaac and Leanne Macon found out later that Cobb County police quickly surrounded the home of the hit-and-run suspect, Christian Martinez, and after a standoff of about three hours, they arrested him. Police say Martinez wasn't even supposed to be driving. His driver's license was suspended. Isaac and his father, Chris, had been driving home from work. Chris, a contractor. Isaac, his apprentice. Isaac says on US-41 at Alatoona Lake, Chris was somehow distracted for a split second and struck a guardrail. Chris got out to move his bumper from the highway, and the hit-and-run driver struck and killed him and struck the very heart of the Macon family. Well, we just celebrated our 29th anniversary not long ago. He, he's just sweet and smart and had the best sense of humor and always trying to make people laugh or cheer you up and he always knows what to do in any situation and I wish he was here right now because I don't know what to do. 
he was the most truthful person ever. He'd always correct me and make me the best I could be. And they somehow want to believe the hit and run suspect and his family are grieving too. I feel sorry for them because I can't imagine going through what they're going through either. <laughs> At the same time, he took my husband away from me, and I don't know how I'm going to live without him. Cradling Chris still and always in their embrace. Wasn't it nice to kind of have an opportunity to dry out out there today? And with the clouds breaking up some, we had some sunshine that came through and we're going to be able to enjoy another dry day here for tomorrow, but we'll have a few clouds around. So some sunshine tomorrow. I don't think we'll have as much sun tomorrow as what we saw breaking out out there today. And then with that cloud cover that's starting to build, it's not going to give us rain on Friday, but those showers will come in on Saturday. So we're going to have a better chance for rain Saturday. It's going to be a quick move. It'll be out of here by Sunday and then behind this system. We're going to have much colder air that will be moving in as we head into next week. So for your Friday starting off cooler temperatures have been mild the past few mornings with all the cloud cover and moisture and rain around. We're going to be in the right around 40 degrees here in Atlanta to start early tomorrow morning, even some 30s in the outlying area. So it will be a cooler start to the day and we get up to 55. That's closer to where we should be for this time of year. We'll have some sun mixing in with clouds and those clouds are just going to thicken up a little bit more during the day. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 9 on the wasometer. Here's what we're watching here with our forecast track. You can see that during the nighttime hours tonight, yeah, we're going to have a few of those clouds around, but they're not giving us any rain in our area. And then during the day tomorrow, we will have a better coverage of clouds around some breaks in those clouds to give us some sunshine. I think we'll see a little more sun breaking through in North Georgia and areas south of the city. We'll just have the swath of clouds moving through Atlanta, but still not giving us any rain and temperatures are going to be cooler there in the 50s. Now watch what happens moving into Saturday. A couple of things I want you to watch here. You can see uh, this area here. The blue line indicates where we have colder air moving in. That's the freezing line. And as this moisture moves in on Saturday, it is possible Saturday morning till around noontime. We might have some brief mixing in the North Georgia mountains there in the higher elevations, maybe even in some valley areas as well with the cold air kind of draining down into those valleys and just some showers here in Metro Atlanta. The better chance for rain will be later on in the afternoon into the evening. We'll see more of those showers that will move through. It will be a fast mover and once that gets out of here, we're going to see the colder air moving in. Rainfall totals not too impressive for Saturday, generally less than a half inch earlier in the day and then once it's all said and done, there might be some spots over in North Georgia that might see a little bit more than an inch, but not really calling for a lot of rain in our area for your Saturday. And then after that gets out of here, we not only dry out, but we get cold. So look at that 55 for a high Friday, 54 Saturday with the showers that'll be here. And then into Sunday, uh, some clouds around, but more sunshine will be breaking through with temperatures around 51 degrees for a high. And then that really cold air for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, lows in the 20s, highs only in the 40s with uh, mostly sunny skies around. And then by Thursday, we're back to a 20% chance for a shower with high temperatures right around 52 degrees. Coming up next in the center of five points at midnight on January 16th, 1920, a towering effigy of John Barleycorn placed on top of a funeral pyre. Coming up, it is a story of Atlanta and prohibition when it became federal law. Love and Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So yeah, just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume it. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the AC keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, ooh, 
Good on that. Text you. All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know. Well. 100 years ago today and tonight, Atlanta was a buzz with a big party at Five Points in downtown. As this was the beginning of the 18th Amendment prohibition in Atlanta. Ron Smith joins me right now, the author of Prohibition in Atlanta: Temperance, Tiger Kings, and White Lightning. But it was somewhat anticlimactic, right? Because prohibition had been a part of our lives here prior to. Uh, 1920. Right, that uh, from around 1908, uh, you had Georgia State Prohibition that had been in effect. So they, you know, Georgia at that time was definitely used to prohibition by this time. Atlanta, the in Fulton County, had tried it in the late 1800s, and they had finally passed uh, the temperance uh, movement had passed Georgia State Prohibition before national prohibition had even. He, it even got uh, put in place. So, and the, and the party looked like this. They were, they were. Uh, there was a biplane. There was an Uncle Sam. Yep. And they had a giant burning, symbolic of John Barleycorn. That's it. That was it. Right, and, right in the middle of five, five points. And explain who Barleycorn was uh, for younger viewers uh, who try to understand what that symbolism is. Yeah, John Barleycorn. I mean, his symbolism goes way back. But basically, you're talking, you know, a, a personification of alcohol. Uh, you know, you have barley from the beer side, you have corn from the whiskey side, and so, and, and a folk song to go along with it. And so, uh, John Barleycorn is basically, if you, if you think of Gambrinus being the beer, you know, icon, then Barleycorn would be the alcohol icon. So you've got prohibition in Atlanta that has been rolling for a long time, officially on this date in 1920. But a couple of blocks away on Decatur Street, there are saloons, there are saloon girls, it's a whole different culture full of immigrants, African Americans who had been marginalized by those Atlantans who wanted to see spirits gone. That's true. I mean, Decatur at this time is their international boulevard. I mean, we sort of kind of have a feel for that at, at Buford uh, in current day, and it was Decatur Street at that time, mm -hmm. leading right up to um, Five Points. So you had all of these. Um, Saloons. Uh, sometimes it was called Rusty Row, and some of the you know not the highlight saloons further down. But uh, yeah, that that was basically their community, and a place that they could they could feel at home. And uh, I mean, the saloon you know operated basically. You, you could get your mail there. You could get a loan there. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of different things that were going on, and a lot of them were specialized. Like this is the mechanic saloon. And you know? politicians weren't concerned because they had a way to get their own liquor. Right? Oh yeah, I mean they they as, you know as state prohibition went along, they were members of uh, they were they were members of uh, what was called locker clubs. And uh, they were scattered all over Atlanta. And so if you, you could basically, it's just the way that the prohibition worked for a long time. You could uh, become a private member, you know, and you could go in, you had your own locker and your key, and you could, you know, host your guests there over your own alcohol, you know, free of uh, worry from the law. And the crazy component of all of this is as well, you've got White Lightning part of the mix from yep. the boys in Dawsonville and Dawson yep. County are driving those powerful Ford coupes through those narrow streets to get to Atlanta, narrow roads. Yep. And and that was that was a major part of the configuration of alcohol here during Prohibition. Oh yeah, I mean uh, White Lightning would come in from all around, like you said, especially Dawsonville, 
somebody could make a call up to the Dawsonville gas station and say, hey, are peaches in season? You know, <laughs> oh yes, peaches are in season. And uh, how many cases do you want for these, uh, you know, the, and they would bring it down and if you were, uh, most of the, it seems to be from most of uh, all of the research I've done, either they would go into the rich section of town and, you know, go through the white picket fence and do a backdoor drop off, or they would go down to the viaducts. You know, the crazy thing about all of this is, you know, we talk about how divisive American politics are. You look at the history of prohibition, it looks like modern times. You've it got does. urban versus rural, you've got evangelicals versus non believers, you have a lot of Christian ideology that's not working with uh, not, you know, uh, many people as far as the population goes. It, it's sort of this. This, this toxic mix, a, a thunderstorm of politics, it creates something that didn't work. It, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't have said it better. It, it really is almost, it's a mirror image of today's, you know, uh, partisan politics. Uh, uh, unless you were the Anti-Saloon League, which was the big lobbyist of the time, and they were nonpartisan, church-based, but uh, they were very, very powerful hey, lobbyists. And, and, until maybe a year ago, we still had Sunday laws around here. Yes. Yeah, and some of it, and, and it's the reason that you go from town to town and you see these different uh, laws is because of local option, where, they st where the temperance movement started from way early on, and they would get the towns sewed up, and then the rural areas, and then the counties, and the counties <laughs> went to the state, and the states went to national prohibition. I've always thought, you know, if this job doesn't work out for me, I could become the spokesperson for the temperance movement here in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's some, there are some politicians who would probably back you on that one. Yeah. Ron Smith, thanks a lot. Your book is absolutely You're great. Co-authored it with your uh, your better half, your significant other, Mary O. Boyle. And if you see these books around town, they're all around town. Pick it up. It's a great read. You can check us out on www.boozehistoryatl.com. Uh, I like it. I'll be looking at that. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. you got to like a man who can talk alcohol like that, right? Calls for unity, Atlanta-based faith leaders coming together, taking a stand against religious intolerance. Enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume it. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad.
So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, the sudden spike in anti-Semitic terrorist attacks that we've seen from Pittsburgh to New York, we've seen them all over the country over the last couple of years. And the Jewish community everywhere in all 50 states certainly is on edge these days. Here in Metro Atlanta, there has been a dramatic call for Jewish unity and solidarity. Eleven Elias Bill Liss and photojournalist Charles Holmes met with two of Atlanta's leading religious leaders for more insight into what lies ahead. For more than 110,000 Jewish residents in Metro Atlanta, the reality of shootings at a Pittsburgh synagogue, attacks inside a Jewish store in Jersey City, and stabbings inside a private home in Muncie, New York, Do you feel bad at all? where the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah was being celebrated, was shocking. I think that the timing of our service this year is going to be remarkable. Chief Rabbi Peter Berg of Atlanta's largest synagogue, the Temple, was concise. We can't let a few people who hate, we can't let uh, terrorists uh, control the day. And it wasn't long before the Atlanta Jewish community organized a major rally in Sandy Springs to show solidarity and a determined resolve to express their faith. For many Jewish people in Metro Atlanta, anti-Semitic acts are an abstract thought, but in fact, it's an Atlanta reality. Jaron Lino is a senior at Riverwood just, High School. I, I have experienced anti-Semitism myself in school and anywhere I've gone, I've experienced it. Rabbi Berg says many Jewish students have been continually singled out with religious slurs. There's hardly a school in the metro area that our students go to that I have not been to this year to meet with the principals or the teachers to talk about kids from our congregation and community. It's an issue, says Rabbi Berg, that requires everyone in the community taking a positive role. We have many partners in the community. Um, we do so much work, for example, with the African American community, and there's such racism that's prominent as well. So we support each other, and uh, we, we stand up and say hatred, all hatred, is terrible. It's an effort strongly supported by the Reverend Raphael Warnock, pastor of Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. Whenever bigotry rears its ugly head, whether it's in a synagogue or a church, whether it is a religious bigotry uh, or racism or any form of xenophobia, I think we have to recognize the ways in which none of us are safe, and we have to stand up uh, and speak on behalf of whoever, whomever uh, is on the receiving end uh, of that bigotry. And on Friday night, a significant number of Atlantas will speak out. Two of Atlanta's largest religious congregations, Jewish and Baptist, joining together here at the temple over the MLK weekend to show solidarity against racial and religious intolerance and to continue a dialogue to end the cycle of bigotry. It's a yearly event that brings together the temple community with the Ebenezer Baptist Church community in joint prayer, solidarity, and commitment. Uh, you're going to see a rabbi and a minister stand up together to say that all forms of hatred, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, bigotry, anti-Semitism, all are unacceptable, and we will not stand idly by. Every time we get together, the temple and Ebenezer Baptist Church, it is its own act of living resistance against racism and anti-Semitism. And I think that service empowers, inspires, and encourages a lot of people uh, to keep on keeping on. It certainly inspires me. Bill, it's so good to see this. I'm curious what's being done to bring unity in the greater Atlanta community beyond Ebenezer and the Temple. Well, the rabbi, for one thing, has been speaking at the mosques. It happened earlier this year when there was an incident with a Muslim shooting somewhere else in the country. And Reverend Warnock has told me the same thing. He often gets together with the church and with the Muslim community and talks to them. So there's a great unity going on between the Jewish community, the African-American community, and the Muslim mm -hmm. community to promote, as you just said, that feeling of great unity within Atlanta. 
And this joint service tomorrow night, everyone has a chance to be a part of it. Absolutely. The wonderful part about that, folks, we are going to be streaming that service on our 11 Alive website tomorrow night. It will be live, starts at 8 o'clock at the Temple. It will also be available if you have a, an app on your phone, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. So all kinds of people can be able to watch it, and we think it will be community-wide. Perfect. Phyllis, thank you so much. Okay. Well, are you ready for a pattern change? You know, so far this month, our temperatures are 11 degrees above average. We've been dealing with a lot of really mild air over us, and today, temperatures were in the mid 60s so that's above average it was pretty mild tomorrow we're going to go back to the mid 50s which is closer to average but still it's going to be kind of on the mild side there but look what happens as we get into saturday temperatures in the upper 50s to near 60 degrees it's going to be mild then as well but we have this really cold air that's up to the north that's going to finally start moving into our direction and once we get into sunday uh, the showers from Saturday will move out and that's going to open the door to this cold front that's going to sweep through and that will start to cool us down on Sunday and then it's going to be really cold here on Monday and into Tuesday. We're talking about temperatures next week, getting back down to lows in the 20s and highs only in the 40s. Stay with us. It looks like as that cold air is is in place, it's going to remain dry. We'll break it all down for you in the seven day outlook in just a few minutes. Okay, Chris, thank you. We're starting off your speed feed on this Thursday night. A tragic update. The Hall County Sheriff's Office says the death of a married couple was a, a murder-suicide. An autopsy from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation shows that Tai Yang shot his wife, Minka, on January 4th before taking his own life. Two of the sons were inside the home on Little Doe Walk uh, at the time. They are 16 and 20. What a tragedy, my goodness. Their grandmother also was inside. The sheriff's office is still working to finish its investigation. Pilots' decision to dump that fuel over schools and neighborhoods in Los Angeles still has a lot of people going, what was going on? Even though it was a flight emergency, it's getting more scrutiny. Parents and the FAA now demanding even more answers. It was revealed the crew never warned air traffic controllers. The FAA says they would have directed the plane to appropriate fuel dumping areas, probably over the ocean. Nobody was seriously hurt, but those kids complained of skin irritation when they were hit by the jet fuel. A teen accused in the shooting at Cumberland Mall is staying in jail and picking up a new charge. Zaire Danula is already facing two felony charges for the shooting in the food mall court in December that sent shoppers scurrying for safety. One person was shot in the neck and shoulder area, but he is okay, believe it or not. In court yesterday, the judge denied him bond and then tacked on a misdemeanor charge. The other teen accused in the case is Jawir Ponce. He is out on bond. Lawmakers took an oath this afternoon swearing to be impartial ahead of next week's highly anticipated impeachment trial in the Senate. But tonight, there are new revelations and allegations against President Trump and his involvement in the situation in Ukraine. NBC's Jay Gray has the very latest. A powerful new report from the Government Accountability Office indicates the White House broke the law by freezing military aid to Ukraine. The president's order to withhold nearly $400 million in aid as he asked Ukrainian officials to investigate his political rivals is at the heart of the ongoing impeachment. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. In an interview with MSNBC's Rachel Maddow, Lev Parnas, an associate of the president's personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani, says he was at the center of an effort to dig up dirt on Joe Biden and his son in Ukraine. This is a, an example of all of the president's henchmen. Arrested on campaign finance charges late last year. He's trying to probably make a deal for himself. I don't even know who this man is. Parnas is now cooperating with House impeachment investigators, handing over phone records and messages, including this handwritten note to get Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to announce that the Biden case will be investigated and a text message exchange with an associate highlighting the push to oust the Ukrainian ambassador at the time, Marie Ivanovich, suggesting she was under surveillance by private security, allegations now being investigated by police in Ukraine. It's a lot more than just a leash, a nonprofit stepping up to make sure first responders are equipped to help animals in need. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. 
In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah. I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. He was on death row scheduled for execution today, but in the final hours, the state board spared Jimmy Metter's life. And a jury originally had sentenced him for the 1987 murder of Donna Anderson in Glynn County. But the state parole board said jurors in this case would have chosen life without parole if that had been an option at the time. That on top of Metter's having no criminal record before the murder, led the board to its decision that Metters will spend the rest of his life in Jackson. It is a pretty rare uh, situation to have a, a death penalty sentence overturned. Since 1976, when the death penalty was reinstated, 75 people have been executed in Georgia. There have only been 12 commutations uh, in our state since 1977, not very many. The last inmate to have his death overturned was about six years ago. Well, our temperatures today were a little bit lower than what we had yesterday, but still they were above average. If you recall yesterday, we missed the record by just one degree. We got up to 72. The record for yesterday's date was 73. Well, today we were at 65. Yeah, so that's lower than what we had yesterday, but it's still above average. We should be at 52 degrees for this time of year. And we should be waking up in the morning to temperatures around 34 at this time of year. This morning, with those showers that we had around, it was very mild at 56 degrees. Speaking of showers, look at this. We picked up about 61 hundredths of an inch of rain since midnight last night with some of that rain that came through. Some spots had even more rain. It was a little heavier in some spots than it was in others. And so our surplus right now for the year is about 
four and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall so far for the year. And so a lot of people are wondering, uh, there's no way we can have a drought. Well, you're right. We do not have drought conditions in our area. This is the new update that was issued today, and we don't have drought. We don't have abnormally dry conditions in North Georgia or Metro Atlanta. If you want to find abnormally dry conditions down in Southwest Georgia, the yellow indicates that abnormally dry. And then even in parts of the Florida Panhandle uh, near the Apalachicola Bay area, uh, they do have some moderate drought there. Uh, but still nothing really major. So that's a good thing that uh, at least this rain is being beneficial, right? So we are going to see another dry day here tomorrow on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. We're going with a 9. Chilly in the morning at 40. We'll even have some 30s in the outlying areas and then 55 for a high. Remember that average high for this time of year, 52. So we'll be closer to that tomorrow, right at 55. We'll be above that by about three degrees. So you see the clouds that are going to be out there tonight. These are not producing any rain, though. And then tomorrow, same story, a mixture of sunshine and clouds, but the clouds won't be giving us any rain during the day. So it'll be another dry day tomorrow, even though I think the sunshine is going to be blocked out a little bit more tomorrow than what we had today. It's going to be on Saturday when we see the showers move in. I want you to see this. This blue line is the zero line or the freezing line. As some moisture moves in, rides up and over a shallow layer of cool air at the surface, we could see some brief winter mixing there. Don't think it's going to cause any major problems, but during the morning hours on Saturday up to around lunchtime, just be aware of that in the mountains of North Georgia. We'll have the liquid variety of precip here in the form of rain, scattered stuff early on Saturday around lunchtime, and then in the afternoon, a better coverage of rain, and then that moves out. Rainfall amounts not that impressive. Most areas will be less than a half inch. There might be some spots in North Georgia that get a little bit closer to an inch there. So dry Friday, but more clouds than 54 Saturday with showers on Sunday. We dry out and it starts getting cold. A high of 51. We're down into the 20s on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. In those mornings, it's going to be really cold. Afternoon highs only in the 40s. We're back to the low 50s on Thursday. A few more clouds will build in and we'll just introduce a 20% chance for a shower later on Thursday. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of the A scene. And they are the stars in the Freeform series called Grownish. And they went to my alma mater, Kittredge Magnet School. I am talking about these Atlanta sisters, Chloe and Halle Bailey, teasing new music dropping this year. And it all went down in an interview with the magazine Pop Sugar. The sisters say their next album, Ungodly Hour, is dropping later this year. They say the name actually came from a recording session with a musical duo of brothers. Now, Halle says this album is more grown and sexy and darker. Ooh. And Chloe says their new music sounds like it belongs on an episode of HBO's Euphoria. Now, we don't know the exact release date yet, but you can see them tonight on Grownish, which premieres tonight. And finally, look who is the DJ for the Atlanta Braves upcoming Chop Fest Gala. Jermaine Dupree taking to his Twitter to announce the big news. Presented by Northside Hospital, the gala actually raises funds for various community organizations. It goes down at the Coca-Cola Roxy on January 24th. When first responders show up to an emergency, they are there to help every man, woman, child, and animal as well on the scene. And while they have the tools to help human beings, they really don't have the proper equipment to help pets. Caitlin Ross found a local nonprofit that is aiming to change that through her digital series, Canine Kate. Oh, and since you've done this before, I'm going to ask you to kind of help along too, okay, buddy? Aaron Fisher loves teaching kids in the community how to help the animals who live there too. Hold it here, and I let it fall. Boop, let it fall. He's showing the pet club at the Howard School how to make leashes for homeless or distressed animals. Okay, so what sort of information exactly should go on a cat and a dog's collar so that we can return it to its owner? After they're put together, the Atlanta Rescue Dog Cafe donates the leashes to firefighters, EMTs, or police officers who are likely to meet animals in need in Atlanta. It's more than just a rope, more than just a leash. It has a lot of meaning to it. It's very personal, so when the firefighters, the police officers, or someone from the public gets one, they see what makes each leash special. Owen Fusco is in sixth grade and loves the project. Last year, I did it um, for my dog that passed away. Um, and yeah, so it meant a lot. Like all students in the pet club, his family loves animals. We had like hermit crabs, but right now we have two lizards two um, dogs and three cats. And that's actually, I think, a, our longest standing um, club, 11 years. Lower school principal Pam Kurkowski thinks learning these skills is so important for the kids. Children really relate to animals and it helps them, um, they feel safe with them and it helps them to build empathy. Big pound, nicely done. 
The Atlanta Rescue Dog Cafe hopes to eventually open an actual cafe in the city for people to come together and learn about animals and how to help them. Coming up, it was supposed to be a day of celebration for Drew Pearson, who believed that he would be going into the Hall of Fame in Canton. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out the way that you would hope. Disappointment in an emotional story coming up next in sports. Hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the sky. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Go on and try to tear me down. I will be rising from the ground like a skyscraper. Demi Lovato will be singing the national anthem in next month's Super Bowl game in Miami. She made the announcement on an Instagram post. This is a girl power lineup for Super Bowl 54. Shakira, Jennifer Lopez taking on the halftime show. And for Lovato, it marks a big step forward. She will perform live for the first time since she was hospitalized a year ago for an overdose. She will sing at the 2020 Grammy Awards on January 26th. So it is a comeback year for the singer and songwriter. She's joined the, the ranks of Gladys Knight, who sang the anthem at the Super Bowl here in Atlanta last year. She was awesome. Wasn't she great? She's always great. The Hall of Fame announced its centennial class yesterday, and there were many finalists, including Dallas Cowboys star from the 1970s, Drew Pearson. He invited our friends at WFAA in Dallas to his home for yesterday's announcement. In fact, he invited a lot of people over for the announcement, but it did not turn out at all like he wanted. By the way, I'm distracted for a moment, if you'll excuse me. That's Roland Lawrence. Number 22 is a 5'10 defensive back for the Falcons. Mm. And that was the 4th of January, 1981, when Pearson caught two touchdowns against the Falcons in that postseason game. 
They scored 20 points in the fourth quarter, the biggest rally anybody had ever seen, sort of like an early 28 to 3. All right, here we go. Here's Drew Pearson. We're going to pop some champagne. It was a day that began with such promise. Whoa, you get that? I feel like uh, a little better about it might happen. I uh, also feel that if it doesn't happen now, when, it, when will it happen? Drew Pearson gathered family and friends at his home, hoping to celebrate going into Canton, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One day you'll be able to tell your kids, my grandpa's in the Hall of Fame. But as the names were listed off. I just want to be a Hall of Fame dad. You all got that covered. Reality began to set in. Oh, God, didn't get it. Pearson had to walk away. Can't do nothing about it. Can't catch no more damn passes. Can't run no more routes. It's there. What upsets me more is when they say you don't deserve it, they talk negative about you. There's nothing negative about my career. And I'm not saying those guys that got it, God bless them. They deserve it, each and every one of them. But man, it hurts. They broke my heart. They broke my heart. And they did it like this. They strung it out like this. Pearson maintained some perspective and even a little bit of a sense of humor. God has another plan for me. Amen. This is not what he wanted for me. Exactly. Maybe he's testing me. When God says it's the right time, it'll be the right time. But God, I'm 69. <laughs> 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 Understand that. <laughs> okay. I remember in fifth grade, I remember I was watching the Lakers Celtics on one of the national networks, and I remember turning to my dad and saying, if I want to stay involved in the game of basketball, and if I can't play in the NBA, I said the next best thing to playing is coaching. It keeps you in the game, You're the adrenaline game. rush, everything with, you know, involved. And really since that time in fifth grade, I put all my energies towards coaching. Josh Pastner of Georgia Tech talking about when he knew he wanted to be a a basketball coach. He is our most recent guest on the Look Alive podcast. This is good. It's good stuff. You can download, subscribe, and check it out wherever you get your podcast, or you can search for it on our YouTube page, and you can watch it there. <laughs> Calls for change. An online petition is calling on lawmakers to rename the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma in honor of Congressman Lewis. Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. 
Yeah. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. There is a push to honor Georgia Congressman John Lewis by renaming the Edmund Pettus Bridge. An online petition is urging Alabama lawmakers to rename the Pettus Bridge where hundreds marched in Selma on Bloody Sunday in 1965. Many demonstrators, including the Congressman and the Reverend Jose Williams, violently beaten by state troopers during the Stop the Voting Rights March then. Nearly uh, 5,000 signatures are calling for the change online. Bankhead Seafood was a community staple. We all knew of it and was reportedly the longest running business in Bankhead. But it closed suddenly in 2018. But now two famous Atlantans are doing what they can to try to bring it back to life. Killer Mike announced the news via Instagram. He says he is proud to bring the restaurant back along with T.I. Bankhead Seafood unexpectedly shut down in 2018. They had been in business 50 years the owner said, you know, they grew older. They didn't have the strength to keep it going. So it's not clear when this restaurant's going to reopen. But now there are reports saying it's going to be significantly larger than the way it had been for about 50 years. They're expecting about 100 people. So it's good that to will see be that a big legacy attraction. to continue. Yeah, yeah. big Absolutely. attraction. A lot of money behind that, a lot of creativity. Right. Mayor Bottoms posted on Instagram about the hush puppies there. Ooh, so I like that idea. it was closed before I moved here. So I'm looking forward to I'm a man it. who likes hush puppies. Yeah. <laughs> if they bring back some of the original recipes, that'd be awesome. Atlanta history. Like oh, yeah. And good you stuff. are a man of Atlanta history. As I am. Well. Uh, I'm. I'm just a man, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Who likes catfish as well? Yes. All right, it's almost 9 o'clock, and we have a lot coming up on 11 Alive News Prime Time. Delayed only two months from the presidential primary, new election machines are being pushed back another week. The potential impact next. Opening up to Dr. Bernice King, students receive important insight from the activists about growing up and handling life without a father. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Can you please help us get a monument or plaque? A mother's plea that launched a movement, and today her dream became a reality. It was all set into motion last year after an exclusive 11 Alive interview with Katherine Leach, the mother of one of the 29 victims killed in the infamous Atlanta child murders case, directly asked for a memorial, and after years of trying, finally her voice was heard. Absolutely, 11 Alive, Elwin Lopez is live at City Hall where the memorials were unveiled this afternoon. We're in the mayor's gallery here at City Hall, and this is the first time that we're seeing the portraits of the victims in the Atlanta child murders case. Now, these are all a part of a tribute to the 29 victims, mostly children killed between 1979 and 1981 here in Atlanta. Now. Each artist was given a photograph of Clifford Jones to paint or draw. Now, these portraits here are from different artists with a variety of styles, but there was one painter who was chosen, Dwayne Mitchell, to paint the victim's portraits to be displayed in the atrium at Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport. But I think it's something that's long overdue. Um, as, I, you know, I was a part of this, um, of that dark time. I remember um, going to school and I remember hearing about these kids missing, um, I remember the curfew, you know, that we had. So I think it's something that's definitely long overdue. Now you'll also be able to see these portraits on the city's website online. And if you want to see them here in person, you have until February 6th. Hey everybody, I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. If you're watching on TV right now, if you're wondering why is that phone sticking up in the middle of the screen right here, it is because I'm doing Facebook Live. I'm talking to uh, many of my followers right now. We have more than 400 people on Facebook Live right now. We're talking about the weather. Many people are talking about how it's chilly. Tom Haney says it's chilly and winder. We have folks asking about the rain coming in for the weekend. Christine Smith says it was a beautiful day today and it felt like spring, she said, although those temperatures are starting to cool down a little bit. Let
let me show you what we're watching right now. No rain in our area. We have a few clouds around. Uh, we do see more of this rain, though, that is out to the west. Nothing major now in Mississippi and Arkansas. The main system is still really well out to the west, and that's what's going to be moving into our area as we head into the weekend. So take a look at the bigger picture. Let me show you what we're watching out there. You know, the temperatures for the last 20 hours today uh, have been really mild overnight. We dipped down into the 50s, and then we warmed up with some sunshine. Now we're watching those temperatures fall again. We're at 53 right now, and that is going to continue overnight with those temperatures that will be cooling off. Many of you will wake up in the morning to temperatures in the 30s. Stay with us. We'll have another dry day tomorrow, but then going into the weekend, we'll see some showers move in. We'll let you know how long that'll stick around and when we'll see the really cold air coming back. A former Gwinnett County deputy has been indicted on charges of excessive force involving an inmate back in 2018. The entire incident was caught on surveillance video. This video shows former deputy sheriff Aaron Masters punching a female inmate three times. The 27 year old was later fired. According to the indictment, he also filed a false report trying to justify his use of force. The delivery of the new voting machines are being pushed back at least one more week. That's another week closer to when early voting begins in Georgia's presidential primary, and that's just six weeks from now. 11 Alive's Doug Richards is at the Capitol with more on why this is taking so long and why it matters. State officials revealed the new timeline in court documents. They tell us that the later deliveries are not expected to impact early voting in the March presidential primary. When they delivered scores of new voting machines to a DeKalb County warehouse last month, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said all 159 Georgia counties would have their new machines by February 8th. Now the state says the counties will get their new machines by mid-February, one week closer to the start of early voting for the March presidential primary. We feel really good about where we're at. Gabriel Sterling is managing the rollout for the Secretary of State's office. Sterling says the state is delivering 33,000 voting machines, plus 33,000 matching printers, 15,000 battery backups, and 8,000 voter check-in poll pads, all going to 159 counties. It is, Sterling says, a logistical challenge that he says the office will meet. Like we were supposed to get a truck of screens yesterday, they didn't show up, they showed up today. That's the kind of thing when you do an implementation with this many moving parts and third party the logistics and everything else that goes along with it, and you're coordinating with 159 counties. Sterling says Fulton County was supposed to get its new voting machines this week. Fulton is scheduled to get them next week. Sterling says he expects this voting machine drama to be all but forgotten by the time early voting starts in the presidential primary, he says, on all new machines on March 2nd. All right, thanks a lot, Doug. By the way, there are still a lot of questions out there about the security of Georgia's elections. Last month, we told you about a petition to change the rules for the upcoming elections to allow counties to use paper ballots as an option. Activists also want voters to be able to submit mail-in absentee ballots in person. And new tonight, the security expert says that there is evidence of tampering of a Georgia server. In 2016, the server was exposed to the open internet for at least six months. In July 2017, the server was wiped clean just after a voter advocacy group filed a lawsuit demanding the overhaul of the state's election system. This all involved the fight over Georgia's sixth congressional district runoff. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts has been sworn in to lead the impeachment trial against President Trump. He'll act as the judge, while senators sworn in today act as the jury. They will determine if the president should be removed from office. The developments today were mostly ceremonial. On Tuesday, the real work begins. And there is still a lot to consider here, like the report just released by the Government Accountability Office saying President Trump violated the law when he withheld military aid from Ukraine. We're already hearing what lawmakers think about that. President Trump simply put broke the law. It hasn't changed my view of whether or not this is an impeachable offense. Senators still have to decide if they will allow new witnesses. They will hear opening arguments on Tuesday. He went to the emergency room for what he thought was a virus on December 1st, but he died a couple of weeks later on Christmas Eve, his 34th birthday. The fiancé of ESPN reporter Edward Ashoff took to Twitter Wednesday saying it was much more than just a virus or pneumonia as first thought. She says an autopsy revealed that he had stage 4 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in his lungs. 
is a disease that's hard to detect in its final stages. Well, tonight we're getting a perspective from 11 Live medical correspondent Dr. Reddy about some early signs to watch out for. You may notice, you know, bumps or lumps under your arm, in your groin, in your neck, and they're not going to go away in a couple of days. If you see that, you definitely want to go to your health care provider. So just days before his death, doctors started treating him for a rare disease known as HLH. Ashaw's fiance says pneumonia in non-Hodgkin's could trigger HLH, which is uh, what may have happened in this case. One of the most genuine and best people you would ever meet. That's how Carroll County is remembering Sergeant Lee Maxwell, which kicks off our speed feed tonight. In a post on Facebook, the sheriff says Maxwell died early this morning after a prolonged illness. Sergeant Maxwell joined the Carroll County Sheriff's Office in 1994, working with several units over the years. Most recently, he was sergeant over the school resource officer division, serving Mount Zion schools. The sheriff calls his passing a tremendous loss for the community. Sergeant Maxwell family will receive friends on Saturday. Funeral services are Sunday at the Mount Zion High School gym. Henry County police will hold a procession tomorrow to say goodbye to K-9 officer Thor. He died last week when a tractor trailer collided with the police vehicle in which he was riding. Tomorrow morning, the public is invited to line the roadway to Cannon to Cleveland Funeral Home and attend a brief memorial service there for Thor. Atlanta's Sweetwater Brewing Company is expanding beyond beer to booze. According to the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Sweetwater has acquired an alcohol license from the city. A notice for a neighborhood planning meeting next month shows brewery co-founder Freddie Bench is scheduled to discuss a distillery at Sweetwater's Buckhead location. Atlanta's craft beer market has exploded in recent years, but craft distilling is also taking off. Old Fourth Ward Distillery, the first distillery to open inside the city limits since Prohibition, opened in 2014, quickly followed by a pair of whiskey makers. Future T.I. Bruno Mars and Nicki Minaj are just some of the artists who uh, made music at Midtown's 11th Street recording studio. But tonight that studio is uh, picking up the pieces after being hit by gunfire. The shooting happened late last night. Police say three men pulled up to the studio and then opened fire. But the studio and four other nearby businesses were also hit by bullets. One witness says it sounded like firecrackers going off. It sounded like a matter of firecrackers going off until I looked over to my left and I seen this car going past with a, a Mac 9 or something sticking out the way, uh, over the roof of the car, uh, letting bullets loose. Not once, but he went around the block and did it again. Okay, here's the good news. No one was hurt in that shooting, but over the years we've covered several shootings at local recording studios. You may recall the shooting back in May. A group fired bullets at Crossover Entertainment, a recording studio in northwest Atlanta. Multiple cars were damaged. The good news, once again, no one was injured. Migos rapper Offset was reportedly in the studio when that took place. April 3rd, three men allegedly opened fire at the Uptown Studios on Antone Street. Popular rapper Waka Flocka was among several witnesses there. Two people were shot. Both are okay, and police are still looking for those shooters. March 2016, rapper Bankroll Fresh was killed in a shootout. And this happened... Uh, Outside the street exec studio in West or Northwest Atlanta, more than 50 shell casings were found outside the building. Police were still searching for suspects, several suspects, but eventually they closed the case saying the rapper was shot out of self-defense. Still to come on prime time, Atlanta police are looking for a woman who was possibly kidnapped. What they say one woman saw happen in this parking lot and the vehicles they're looking for now. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook as we speak, taking your weather questions. You can join the conversations right now on his Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him after the break. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can join the conversation down in the community section. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time coming up after the break. voice it is never too loud or too much your voice has the power to tell it like it is bringing us together to act together our voices grow together we come alive amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future together we are unstoppable together we are where atlanta speaks 
remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. Ah. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. From different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black... Well, we learned a murder suspect killed during the execution of a search warrant was just 19 years old. The officer involved shooting unfolded this morning on Chasebrook Drive in Powder Springs. The GBI says Samuel David Mallard was wanted on outstanding arrest warrants for murder and aggravated assault with intent to rob. Mallard also has a history of impersonating police officers with at least seven arrests before he turned 18. 11 Alive's Joe Henke breaks down what we know. For several hours today, investigators with the GBI focused on the roadway behind me here and specifically that red car, which is boxed in by cars from the Cobb County Police Department. We are told that is where the officer involved shooting took place this morning as officers attempted to serve that arrest warrant for murder. In the middle of Chaseway Circle near Powder Springs, double digit evidence markers covered the shooting scene where Cobb County Police confirm an adult male, a suspect in a murder case, was shot and killed. The red car in the center of it appeared to have two bullet holes in the windshield and a shattered passenger side window. Before the shooting, one man living on Chaseway Circle says he heard officers yelling at someone to get on the ground. Deborah Ingham says she heard a quick series of gunshots that one of her neighbors witnessed. She was walking her dog and she saw uh, the police shoot him. Cobb County Police ended up here as part of an investigation into several crimes. A series of violent crimes to include a murder. This investigation has been ongoing for several days. Cobb County Police Chief Tim Cox says while trying to serve a warrant this morning, his officer shot and killed one of the murder suspects. We have a sleepy little neighborhood. It's just, it's wonderfully quiet. And so to hear that is surprising. And while Chief Cox would not discuss the specific crimes connected to the ongoing investigation from his department, he did confirm their case is not closed. Uh, we do have some of the suspects in custody. Uh, it's exactly uh, who they are or ages, I'm not going to disclose right now. There are other suspects that we, we are in the process of uh, interviewing and looking for. Several neighbors we talked with say they do not know who was involved in the shooting this morning, but they tell me that red car that investigators have been focusing on, they've never seen it on their street before, so they at least are assuming that the person involved in the shooting did not live in their neighborhood. By the way, that Cobb County shooting is the fourth officer involved shooting the GBI is investigating this year. And just last night, a man was shot and killed by police in Lawrenceville. It happened at a Wednesday on, on at a win, Wendy's on Scenic Highway. Police say the worker was uh, called them about a man who had a beer but wouldn't leave. When the officer showed up, he became angry and then fought with the officer. Witnesses say 47-year-old Albert Lee Hughes grabbed a chair and started attacking the officer. And we're told an officer used his taser, but that didn't work, and that's when the officer opened fire. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, continuing our conversation not only with you here on TV, but also on Facebook Live. That's why my phone is right here. Uh, I have a lot of people telling me that they're watching on TV and on Facebook Live. Others are watching just exclusively on Facebook. So this is a way that we can bring that conversation all together here. And a lot of folks are asking, when is it going to snow? We don't see that in the next seven days here, and they're talking a lot about the cold air that's coming. So let me show you the dry weather that we have right now, but let me take you out to the west, and you can see some of the rain there. A lot of this back in Mississippi and what was over in Alabama is drying up. Really, the main system with this is well out to the west, and this is going to take a while before this moves into our area. It's showing even snow on the backside. We're not going to have to worry about that, but we will get some rain coming in during the day on Saturday. 
uh, with some showers and then the colder air is going to move in. So let me show you what we're watching. Take a look at the bigger picture and you can see what is uh, what's lo what it's looking like with these temperatures. And a lot of people on my Facebook live have been commenting, hey, it is cooler out there tonight. Yes, it is. You know, we've been mild the past few nights when it's been so wet. We've had a lot of moisture content in the air and we've had some of that rain around. Well, we are dry out there tonight and um, temperatures are cooling down 53 now. 51 in Marietta and Duluth, lower 50s in Canton and Gainesville. It is a little milder here in Athens. It's 56, Eatonton is 57, and we're going to continue to watch these temperatures fall tonight. Um, and, and it's going to be dry for now as we enjoyed a dry day today. It'll be dry again tomorrow, even though we'll see a few more clouds around. But then we're going to see the rain returning on Saturday with showers in our area. And then that moves out pretty quickly and then it's going to get much colder next week. So what I want you to do right now, do y'all see this QR code right here at the bottom of the screen? Hold your camera of your phone up to that QR code and point it at that QR code and it'll help you download our 11 Alive app. So as we're tracking these showers, That'll be coming in on Saturday. You will be able to track those as well on radar there. You can also enable alerts so that the app will let you know if any warnings are issued in your area. We don't expect to see any warnings though this weekend, but it's a great thing to have on your phone and ready to help you track the weather. Tomorrow morning, starting off at 40 in town, 55 in the afternoon. Average high for this time of year is 52. So we'll be close to average tomorrow on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Going with a 9, we're not going to see as much sun tomorrow as we saw today that was breaking through. In fact, we start off in the morning with a good coverage of clouds around. At lunchtime, still some clouds, more sun northeast and some breaks down to the south of us. And we will see in the afternoon some of that sunshine that'll break through at times, but no rain from those clouds tomorrow. Once we get into Saturday, though, that's when we'll see some more moisture moving in. And we're watching this freezing line up in northeast Georgia early on Saturday morning. As this moisture moves into that colder air, we might see some mixing with some rain or freezing rain or maybe some sleet there. We don't expect any major issues. It won't last long all just the potential for rain in Atlanta, nothing frozen. And then our better chance for rain will be later in the day here on Saturday with showers. It's going to move out quickly and then we'll see drier air coming in for Sunday with the really chilly air back to only 51 degrees for a high temperature here on your Sunday. And then look at the lows Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday in the 20s. Afternoon highs only in the 40s and then by Thursday, a few more clouds around 20% chance for a shower late and high temperatures back up into those lower 50s. I'm Eric Chemi and this is your CNBC News Now. Stocks closing at a record high, fueled by upbeat economic data. The Dow gaining 267 points, the S&P up 27 and NASDAQ up 98. U.S. retail sales rising for a third straight month in December. That's according to data from the Commerce Department. Those numbers indicating the U.S. consumer remains strong despite department stores like Target, Kohl's, JCPenney, and Macy's all reporting weak holiday sales. Shares of Gap spiking in the after-hours session after the company said it's no longer planning to spin off its Old Navy brand as a standalone company, citing cost and weakness in the retail sector as concerns. The retailer initially announced plans to spin off the brand last February as Gap struggled to bring in shoppers. And the new North American trade deal known as USMCA is on its way to President Trump's desk for ratification after being passed by the Senate earlier today. Once the president signs the pact, it will only need approval from Canada before taking effect. The deal will open Canadian dairy markets to American producers and help better protect jobs of U.S. auto workers. And that's your news now. Is the Humane Society misusing donations? That's a question being asked after an allegation was shared on social media. Our Verify team is following the paper trail and separating fact from fiction. The commercials can really tug at your heartstrings. So much so, some find it hard to resist opening their wallets. But some posts circulating social media have made some people question their fundraising efforts. Terry asked us to verify a post she saw on Facebook claiming the Humane Society of the U.S. gives only 1% to shelters. They have $50 million in an offshore Caribbean account and they have paid $11 million to settle a racketeering lawsuit. To verify those claims, we went straight to the source, the Humane Society of the United States. 
According to its 2018 annual report, the organization raised over $284 million in donations. 48 million of that went to the direct care of animals in sanctuaries and those rescued in disasters. Keep in mind, the organization focuses on outreach and awareness, not specifically on supporting shelters. As for that claim about an offshore account, we checked their tax records. Turns out they have investments in the Caribbean, Central America and Europe. There's a reason for that. The Humane Society is a global organization with an international affiliate, Humane Society International. They make that clear to their contributors. Now, about that racketeering lawsuit. It's part of a settlement that stemmed from a lawsuit claiming the Ringling Brothers Circus abused its elephants. The Humane Society was not named in it, but a group it acquired, the Fund for Animals, was. The HSUS says their portion of the payout will be covered by its insurer not donor dollars. So we can verify these claims of the Humane Society misusing money are false. All right, do you have something you want us to verify? Just hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, or email verify at 11alive.com and we're going to get you an answer. Planned Parenthood is dropping more money than ever for the 2020 election. We'll tell you where that money is going next. Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. You know, like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all. Planned Parenthood is putting more money than ever before into this year's election. The group says a lot is at stake, but the money isn't going to Georgia. That might be surprising to some because Georgia is one of nine states that last year passed laws restricting abortion. Georgia's new abortion law is in limbo right now in the courts. It bans abortions once a fetal heartbeat can be detected. Usually that happens at six weeks. But of the $45 million Planned Parenthood plans to spend in 2020, the majority is going to nine key states. None of those states pass abortion restrictions in 2019. That decision is strategic. Planned Parenthood's We Decide 2020 initiative has selected states where pro-life politicians are vulnerable. For example, in Arizona, 
Republican Senator Martha McSally is in a tight race against Democrat Mark Kelly. McSally was appointed to the Senate in 2018. And other states on the list like Colorado and North Carolina have Republican incumbents who will not know their Democratic challengers until the primary. So Planned Parenthood is focusing money on the races that have a chance of getting Democrats additional seats in the Senate. But a representative tells us this is just the beginning and that Planned Parenthood supporters will be working in all 50 states, including Georgia, leading up to the 2020 election. All right, straight ahead, calls for unity. Atlanta-based faith leaders are now coming together, taking a stand against religious intolerance. Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, And I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil' Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like... Well, a sudden spike in anti-Semitic terrorist type attacks in the Northeast has the Jewish community on edge. Here in Metro Atlanta, there's been a dramatic call for Jewish unity and solidarity. 11 Alive's Bill List and photojournalist Charles Holmes met with two of Atlanta's leading religious leaders for deeper insight into what lies ahead. For more than 110,000 Jewish residents in Metro Atlanta, the reality of shootings at a Pittsburgh synagogue, attacks inside a Jewish store in Jersey City, and stabbings inside a private home in Muncie, New York, Do you feel bad at all? where the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah was being celebrated, was shocking. I think that the timing of our service this year is going to be remarkable. Chief Rabbi Peter Berg of Atlanta's largest synagogue, the Temple, was concise. We can't let a few people who hate, we can't let uh, terrorists uh, control the day. And it wasn't long before the Atlanta Jewish community organized a major rally in Sandy Springs to show solidarity and a determined resolve to express their faith. For many Jewish people in Metro Atlanta, anti-Semitic acts are an abstract thought, but in fact, it's an Atlanta reality. 
Jaron Lino is a senior at Riverwood High School. I have experienced anti-Semitism myself in school and anywhere I've gone, I've experienced it. Rabbi Berg says many Jewish students have been continually singled out with religious slurs. There's hardly a school in the metro area that our students go to that I have not been to this year to meet with the principals or the teachers to talk about kids from our congregation and community. It's an issue, says Rabbi Berg, that requires everyone in the community taking a positive role. We have many partners in the community. Um, we do so much work, for example, with the African American community, and there's such racism that's prominent as well. So we support each other, and uh, we, we stand up and say hatred, all hatred is terrible. It's an effort strongly supported by the Reverend Raphael Warnock, pastor of Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. Whenever bigotry rears its ugly head, whether it's in a synagogue or a church, whether it is a religious bigotry uh, or racism or any form of xenophobia, I think we have to recognize the ways in which none of us are safe and we have to stand up uh, and speak on behalf of whoever, whomever uh, is on the receiving end uh, of that bigotry. And on Friday night, a significant number of Atlantas will speak out. Two of Atlanta's largest religious congregations, Jewish and Baptist, joining together here at the temple over the MLK weekend to show solidarity against racial and religious intolerance and to continue a dialogue to end the cycle of bigotry. It's a yearly event that brings together the temple community with the Ebenezer Baptist Church community in joint prayer, solidarity, and commitment. Uh, you're going to see a rabbi and a minister stand up together to say that all forms of hatred, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, bigotry, anti-Semitism, all are unacceptable, and we will not stand idly by. Every time we get together, the temple and Ebenezer Baptist Church, it is its own act of living resistance against racism and anti-Semitism. And I think that service empowers, inspires, and encourages a lot of people uh, to keep on keeping on. It certainly inspires me. Bill, it's so good to see this. I'm curious what's being done to bring unity in the greater Atlanta community beyond Ebenezer and the temple. Well, the rabbi, for one thing, has been speaking at the mosques. It happened earlier this year when there was an incident with a Muslim shooting somewhere else in the country. And Reverend Warnock has told me the same thing. He often gets together with the church and with the Muslim community and talks to them. So there's a great unity going on between the Jewish community, the African-American community, and the Muslim mm -hmm. community to promote, as you just said, that feeling of great unity within Atlanta. And this joint service tomorrow night, everyone has a chance to be a part of it. Absolutely. The wonderful part about that, folks, we are going to be streaming that service on our 11 Alive website tomorrow night. It will be live, starts at 8 o'clock at the Temple. It will also be available if you have a, an app on your phone. You'll be able to watch the whole thing. So all kinds of people can be able to watch it, and we think it will be community-wide. Perfect. Billis, thank you so much. Okay. It's so nice to be dry out there tonight and not be tracking any showers or approaching thunderstorms or anything like that like we have been uh, over the past few nights. So dry weather. We do have some clouds around, though. There is a system out to the west that we're watching that is going to bring a little moisture our way. Now, right now, it's been spreading some moisture into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. That part is drying up now. Really, the core of that system is still out to the west, and that's still going to take a little while before that system makes it into our area, bringing us rain, and that's mainly going to be on Saturday. Now, let me show you a new development that we have out there for today. Remember on Monday night, maybe you were watching the national championship game, and then late that night, uh, we had some storms that came through on the south side, and uh, it caused some damage down in Pike and Spalding County. The National Weather Service surveyed the damage, and they uh, were able to find out that from that damage that it was an EF0 tornado in Pike County near the Reedsboro area with winds of about 80 miles an hour, and it was on the ground for about a mile and a half. It did some damage to some trees and some buildings down there as well. That same system, when it went into Spalding County, uh, a, a funnel touched down again there with a rating of an EF0 as a tornado. The wind speed at 85 miles an hour, but the 
path is only about a third of a mile long. It also caused some damage with some trees, took the roof off of an outbuilding as well. So some damage down there from those storms. We don't have any storms in our area tonight, thank goodness. And even with the rain coming in for the weekend, we're not expecting any severe weather with that. We're going to break down the timing of that rain and what happens when that rain moves out. We're going to talk about that colder air in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. Topping our speed feed tonight, a woman who was possibly forced into a van and now Atlanta police say they need your help. APD says they received a call from witnesses who say that they saw two men take a woman from the passenger side of an infinity and then force her into a white work van. The incident taking place this morning on Moreland Avenue. This is near Custer Avenue in southeast Atlanta. Investigators said the men took the infinity and that they're now looking for that car and that's where they need your help here. So here's a description. There's some distinct markings to look out for. The infinity has a temporary tag and the gas filler door appeared to be missing or painted black. Anyone with information is urged to call APD. A group of thieves moving fast, quickly breaking into 26 vehicles within just two hours overnight at different apartment complexes and hotels in Gwinnett County. Take a look at these photographs here of three suspects. Police say they got into the cars by smashing the windows, mostly taking wallets. Police are asking people to look out for a black SUV, possibly a Jeep Cherokee with blackout rims and a long sticker on the top of the back window. A man has now been indicted for the murder of an internationally known UGA professor after she was found dead next to a hot tub in Baldwin County. Marcus Lillard was charged in May for the murder of Marianne Shockley. Another man who was there at the time is the one who called 911. Investigators say they spoke with him shortly before he killed himself at the scene. We spoke to some of Shockley's former students who say that she was a wonderful woman, strong and talented, and to hear a lot more about her life and those who knew her, knew her you can read more on the 11 Alive app. He was on death row scheduled for execution today, but in the final hours, the state board spared Jimmy Meter's life. A jury originally sentenced him to death for the 1987 murder of Don Anderson in Glenn County. But the state parole board said jurors in this case would have chosen a life without parole sentence if that had been an option at the time. That on top of Meters having no criminal record before the murder led the board to its decision that Meters will spend the rest of his life in prison. It is pretty rare to have a commutation for a death penalty case. Since 1976, when the death penalty was reinstated, 75 people have been executed in Georgia. There have only been 12 commutations in our state since 1977. That last inmate to have a death sentence commuted was six years ago. At the state capitol, Governor Brian Kemp says the plans to give teachers another raise are already in play. He didn't mention tax cuts or how the state might fix a revenue shortfall that could make those teacher raises problematic. This came during the governor's annual State of the State speech today. 11 Alive's Doug Richards was there and has more. The governor mostly steered clear of divisive issues. He did briefly mention the state's controversial heartbeat abortion law passed last year, but he used it to launch into a crowd-pleasing pitch to change the state's adoption laws. As a pro-life governor, I believe we need to protect the unborn and the born. Governor Kemp says he wants to make it easier for Georgians to adopt children, tripling an adoption tax credit to $6,000 for parents willing to adopt. Kemp also called for more money for school teachers, pitching a $2,000 raise for all public school teachers on top of a raise approved last year. Let's give our educators another well-deserved pay raise. He's made the promise. It is up to the rest of our politicians across the state to stand behind that and value public education as much as he has shown that he does. Former Governor Nathan Deal was among the luminaries in the audience for Kemp's speech, along with Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Senator Johnny Isaacson. Retired Senator Johnny Isaacson was also in attendance. The governor promised to create a Parkinson's disease research project at UGA in Isaacson's name. Kemp also backed a cause at the Capitol to eliminate surprise medical billing for out-of-network treatment. Democrats said they'd back that effort, but also called it insufficient to help Georgians lacking health care insurance. The answer was full Medicaid expansion, and we have not done that and have not shown that we're going to be a willingness to do that. And so the concern is that we're actually just providing a Band-Aid on a very serious health concern that are facing all of our Georgians. 
The governor did not mention the film industry or the state's generous tax credits, which have come under fire from two state audits released in the last week or so. All right, straight ahead is more than just a leash. A nonprofit organization is stepping up to make sure first responders are equipped to help animals in need. Languages and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me when I stay in the flow. So yeah, just do it. Demi Lovato will sing the national anthem at next month's Super Bowl in Miami. She made the announcement in an Instagram post. This is a big girl power lineup for Super Bowl 54. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira are taking on the halftime show. And for Lovato, this marks a big step. This month, she will perform live for the first time since she was hospitalized for an overdose in 2018. She'll sing at the 2020 Grammy Awards on January 26th. So this is a really big comeback year for the singer-songwriter. She's joining the ranks of Gladys Knight, who sang the national anthem at the last Super Bowl here in Atlanta. Okay, let's keep that same football theme. The uh, Hall of Fame announcing its centennial class yesterday. There were many finalists, including Dallas Cowboys star Drew Pearson. Now, he invited our friends at WFAA in Dallas to his home for yesterday's announcement. But sometimes life does not go as planned. It was a day that began with such promise. Whoa, you get that? I feel like uh, a little better about it might happen. 
I uh, also feel that if it doesn't happen now, when, it, when will it happen? Drew Pearson gathered family and friends at his home, hoping to celebrate going into Canton, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And one day you'll be able to tell your kids, my grandpa was in the Hall of Fame. But as the names were listed off. I just want to be a Hall of Fame dad. You all got that covered. Reality began to set in. Oh, God, didn't get it. Pearson had to walk away. Can't do nothing about it. Can't catch no more damn passes. Can't run no more routes. It's there. What upsets me more is when they say you don't deserve it, they talk negative about you. There's nothing negative about my career. And I'm not saying those guys that got it, God bless them. They deserve it, each and every one of them. But, man, it hurts. They broke my heart. They broke my heart. And they did it like this. They strung it out like this. Pearson maintained some perspective and even a little bit of a sense of humor. God has another plan for me. Amen. This is not what he wanted for me. Maybe he's testing me. When God says it's the right time, it'll be the right time. But God, I'm 69. <laughs> 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 Understand that. <laughs> okay. Dry weather out there tonight. We're not tracking any showers or thunderstorms around. It's going to be a quiet night out there. We do have a few clouds around and temperatures are falling tonight as well. The rain is out to the west and this activity that you see in Mississippi trying to push into Alabama is falling apart. The main part of that system is still really far out to the west and that's still going to take a little while before it makes it here. We will eventually see some rain moving in on Saturday. We don't expect storms. It's going to be on the cool side with that rain moving in and maybe about a half inch of rain during the day on Saturday. Now I want to show you our temperatures for today. Take a look at the almanac. We made it up to 65 degrees for a high temperature this afternoon, which is lower than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 72, which was one degree away from the record. So yes, it wasn't as warm today, but it was still above average. We should be at 52 for this time of year and our average low for this time of year should be 34. This morning we had those temperatures that were in the 50s. That was really after the rain came through and then it dropped a little bit into the 50s before we climbed back up into those mid 60s. Now I want you to remember these numbers. Okay, 52 and 34. Remember that for a second while I show you the precip. We picked up uh, about a little bit more than six tenths of an inch of rain. So our surplus right now is four and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall. Now you remember those temperatures 52 and 34. That's where we should be for this time of year. Yesterday, we were 20 degrees above average when we hit 72 degrees and we've had this mild air that's in place. Now it is going to be a little bit cooler uh, as we go into tomorrow in the mid 50s. Saturday will be in the mid to upper 50s, uh, but that's still on the mild side compared to the much colder air that is up to the north. And so we'll have some showers on Saturday and after those showers move through, the colder air is going to start spilling in here. We'll begin to feel that on Sunday with temperatures that'll be in the lower 50s. It'll be a little bit breezy, but then you will really feel the cold air on Monday and into Tuesday. We're going to see the temperatures fall into the upper 20s Monday morning with afternoon highs that'll be in the upper 40s. Tuesday and Wednesday morning, even in the mid 20s for lows with afternoon highs that'll be in the 40s. So that cold air stays with us through Tuesday and Wednesday, and then it retreats to the north and we begin to see that milder air coming back in once we get to the end of next week. And then that opens the door for a little bit of moisture to return for the end of next week too. Right now we're in the 50s here, 40s in Carrollton, 40s up in North Georgia. Most places are in those 50s, even mid 50s now in Athens and over in Eatonton and in Thomaston as well. We'll get up to 55 in the afternoon tomorrow. Our scale from 1 to 11, where 11 is a perfect day. We're going to go with a 9. We will see clouds around tonight and then also for the day tomorrow. Uh, we're just going to say mostly cloudy skies, some sunshine here and there. Not totally overcast, but also not totally sunny, too. And there's that rain for Saturday. The best chances for rain will be afternoon and evening. And then we dry out Sunday. Temperatures back down to 51. And there you see those 20s for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning. Afternoon highs only in the 40s. We're back up to the lower 50s on Thursday. That's with a few more clouds around. And we'll start to introduce a rain chance coming in for the end of next week, too.
All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of the A-Scene. And they are the stars in the Freeform series called Grownish. And they went to my alma mater, Kittredge Magnet School. I am talking about these Atlanta sisters, Chloe and Halle Bailey, teasing new music dropping this year. And it all went down in an interview with the magazine Pop Sugar. The sisters say their next album, Ungodly Hour, is dropping later this year. They say the name actually came from a recording session with a musical duo of brothers. Now, Halle says this album is more grown and sexy and darker Ooh. and Chloe says their new music sounds like it belongs on an episode of HBO's Euphoria now we don't know the exact release date yet but you can see them tonight on Grownish, which premieres tonight and finally look who is the DJ for the Atlanta Braves upcoming Chop Fest Gala Jermaine Dupri taking to his Twitter to announce the big news presented by Northside Hospital the gala actually raises funds for various community organizations it goes down at the Coca-Cola Roxy on January 20th 24th. When first responders show up to an emergency, they're there to help every man, woman, child, and animal on scene. And while they have the tools to help the people, they sometimes aren't equipped to help the pets. Caitlin Ross found a local nonprofit that's aiming to change that through her digital series, K9 Kate. Oh, and since you've done this before, I'm going to ask you to kind of help along too, okay, buddy? Aaron Fisher loves teaching kids in the community how to help the animals who live there too. Hold it here, and I let it fall. Boop, let it fall. He's showing the pet club at the Howard School how to make leashes for homeless or distressed animals. So what sort of information exactly should go on a cat and a dog's collar so that we can return it to its owner? After they're put together, the Atlanta Rescue Dog Cafe donates the leashes to firefighters, EMTs, or police officers who are likely to meet animals in need in Atlanta. It's more than just a rope, more than just a leash. It has a lot of meaning to it. It's very personal. So when the firefighters, the police officers, or someone from the public gets one, they see what makes each leash special. Owen Fusco is in sixth grade and loves the project. Last year, I did it um, for my dog that passed away. Um, and yeah, so it meant a lot. Like all students in the pet club, his family loves animals. We had like hermit crabs, but right now we had two lizards two um, dogs and three cats. And that's actually, I think, a, our longest standing um, club, 11 years. Lower school principal Pam Krakowski thinks learning these skills is so important for the kids. Children really relate to animals and it helps them, um, they feel safe with them and it helps them to build empathy. Big pound, nicely mm -hmm. done. The Atlanta Rescue Dog Cafe hopes to eventually open an actual cafe here in the city for people to come together and learn about animals and how to help them. To 7 a.m. only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You could have super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive.
Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block. We will see uh, some cooler weather tomorrow. Highs near 55 degrees. That's closer to where we should be, but a few more clouds blocking out the sun. The rain moves in Saturday. Then we clear out Sunday. It dries out for a while, but it also gets cold for a while. Lows in the 20s, highs in the 40s next week. Boy. Okay, winter, good to see ya. Well, <laughs> some people say that. Stick around with you at 10. It's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They it are is. fun. They're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Only on this Thursday night at 10, a car break-in crime spree. And that's how we begin tonight with the story of a dozen cars. And it is happening within a period of about two hours. 27 vehicles broken into. And you can see the map as to where it is. There's a number of locations, about five spots 
all in Gwinnett County, smashing into more than two dozen cars and apartments, hotels, thousands of dollars worth of valuables also stolen. John Cherrick spoke to a man who says a precious gift to his wife is now gone. Three people did a lot of damage in a short amount of time. They swept through like a storm, targeting hotel and apartment parking lots in the Lawrenceville area early Tuesday morning. And in two hours, they broke into 26 vehicles. Walden Alvarez was parked at a Hampton Inn off of Riverside Drive. He left his valuables inside his pickup truck overnight. They stole my, uh, my wife's uh, linen rings uh, worth about six grand. Um, my wallet with uh, $500 cash. And more. Surveillance cameras captured the three men at work but did not get a good look at their faces. The cameras did get a better look at the SUV they were using, possibly a Jeep Cherokee, similar to this one, and it has black rims and some sort of sticker across the back window. This was a lot of incidences during a short period of time. Gwinnett County Police Corporal Kathleen Adams urging people to keep an eye out. Please, number one, do not, do not engage the suspect. Call 911 and be the best witness possible. Give a good description, whether it's clothes, vehicle, any information that our officers can use to help identify these suspects. Walden Alvarez, as mad at himself as he is at the thieves. I'm very, very frustrated, very upset, very mad because this is, this is not right. So I, I'm, I'm very upset. Clearly anyone is a potential target. One of the car break-in victims is a Gwinnett County police recruit. A convicted killer was supposed to be executed tonight, but at the last minute his life has been spared. As the State Board of Parole stepped in and called off the death sentence, it is a rare event. It has not happened here in our state in years. Ryan Kruger shows us why this man's life was spared while others were not. For three decades, Jimmy Metters has sat on Georgia's death row, but with only a few hours to spare came relief. The State Board of Pardons and Paroles commuted his death sentence to life without parole. 11 Alive legal analyst Latonia Hines reviewed the clemency order. And they talked about the fact that he had no prior, like a, a really minimum uh, criminal history and that he had been a model, um, you know, inmate during those 30 years. Since the death penalty was reinstated in the 1970s, 75 people have been put to death in this state with only 12 commutations. The most recent ones were Tommy Waldrip in 2014 and Daniel Green in 2012. So why was this execution thrown out? The clemency order says because in 1989, when he was convicted, life without parole wasn't an option. And the jurors that were spoken to about this, they said had they had this option, that probably would have been what they would have gone with. Metters was convicted of killing a store clerk. Meanwhile, back in November, Ray Jefferson Cromartie was executed in Georgia for also killing a store clerk. But Cromartie had other violent crimes on his record, including another shooting, Metters didn't have a violent record. At the time when the jurors were considering the case, they didn't have the option that you have now in death penalty cases of being able to make that decision of life without the possibility of parole. And I also spoke to a law professor who told me that death penalty sentences in Georgia have dropped dramatically ever since the state started allowing life without the possibility of parole. That happened in the mid-90s. A woman possibly forced into a van and kidnapped. Now Atlanta police need your help to find her. APD says they received a call from witnesses who says that she saw two men take a woman away in a gray infinity and force her into their white work van on Moreland Avenue this morning. Happened around 8. Investigators say the men took the infinity and now they're looking for that car. There's some pretty distinct markings on the car, though. It has a temporary tag and the gas tank door appeared to be either missing or painted black. A man has been indicted for the murder of an internationally known UGA professor. She was found dead next to a hot tub in Baldwin County. Marcus Lillard was charged in May for the murder of Marianne Shockley. Police say a man who called 911 killed himself at the scene. We spoke to some of Shockley's former students who remembered her as a wonderful teacher and a wonderful person. To hear more about her life from those who knew her, you can read our story on the 11 Alive app. We've learned a murder suspect killed during an attempt to serve a search warrant was 19 years old. The officer involved shooting unfolding this morning on Chase Book Drive in Powder Springs. The GBI says Samuel David Mallard was wanted on an outstanding arrest warrant for murder and aggravated assault with intent to rob. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey breaks down what we know. 
For several hours today, investigators with the GBI focused on the roadway behind me here and specifically that red car, which is boxed in by cars from the Cobb County Police Department. We are told that is where the officer involved shooting took place this morning as officers attempted to serve that arrest warrant for murder. In the middle of Chaseway Circle near Powder Springs, double digit evidence markers covered the shooting scene where Cobb County police confirm an adult male, a suspect in a murder case, was shot and killed. The red car in the center of it appeared to have two bullet holes in the windshield and a shattered passenger side window. Before the shooting, one man living on Chaseway Circle says he heard officers yelling at someone to get on the ground. Deborah Ingham says she heard a quick series of gunshots that one of her neighbors witnessed. She was walking her dog and she saw uh, the police shoot him. Cobb County Police ended up here as part of an investigation into several crimes. A series of violent crimes to include a murder. This investigation has been ongoing for several days. Cobb County Police Chief Tim Cox says while trying to serve a warrant this morning, his officer shot and killed one of the murder suspects. We have a sleepy little neighborhood. It's just, it's wonderfully quiet. And so to hear that is surprising. And while Chief Cox would not discuss the specific crimes connected to the ongoing investigation from his department, he did confirm their case is not closed. Uh, we do have some of the suspects in custody. Uh, it's exactly uh, who they are or ages, I'm not going to disclose right now. There are other suspects that we, we are in the process of uh, interviewing and looking for. Several neighbors we talked with say they do not know who was involved in the shooting this morning, but they tell me that red car that investigators have been focusing on, they've never seen it on their street before, so they at least are assuming that the person involved in the shooting did not live in their neighborhood. And the Cobb County shooting is the fourth officer involved shooting the GBI is investigating this year. So just last night, a man was shot and killed by police in Lawrenceville. It happened at the Wendy's on Scenic Highway. Police say workers called them about a man who had a beer and wouldn't leave. When an officer showed up, he got angry and fought the officer. Witnesses say Albert Lee Hughes grabbed a chair and started attacking the officer. Investigators say an officer used his taser, but that wasn't enough. So the officer shot Hughes. A mother's plea that launched a movement and today her dream becomes a reality. It was all set into motion last year after an exclusive 11 Alive interview with Katherine Leach, the mother of one of the 29 victims killed in the infamous Atlanta child murders case directly asked the city for a memorial. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, who says she was moved to honor the children after our reporting, unveiled one of two memorials for the lives lost at City Hall today. Artists were asked to draw or paint one of the victims in the Atlanta child murders case. From those, they chose one artist to depict the portraits of the 29 victims at the Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport in May. Dwayne Mitchell was the chosen artist for the project. I think it's something that's long overdue. Um, as I, you know, I was a part of this um, of that dark time. I remember um, going to school, and I remember hearing about these kids missing. Um, I remember the curfew, you know, that we had. So I think it's something that's definitely long overdue. The city will also have the portraits on a gallery on its website. If you want to see them here. You can until February 6th. A former Gwinnett County deputy indicted on charges of excessive force involving an inmate in 2018. All of this was caught on surveillance video. And video showing the former deputy sheriff, Aaron Masters, punching a female inmate three times. The 27-year-old was later fired. According to the indictment, he also filed a false report trying to justify his use of force. Well, they went to the emergency room for what he thought was a virus on the first day of December. He died a couple of weeks later on Christmas Eve, his 34th birthday. The fiancé of ESPN college football reporter Edward Ashoff took to Twitter yesterday, revealing what killed him was much more than just a virus or pneumonia, as everyone first thought. She says an autopsy revealed that Ashoff had stage 4 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in his lungs. It is a disease almost impossible to detect until its final stages. Tonight we're getting perspective from 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy about some early signs to be on guard for. You may notice, you know, bumps or lumps under your arm, in your groin, in your neck, and they're not going to go away in a couple of days. If you see that, you definitely want to go to your health care provider. So the other information is just days before his death, doctors started treating him for a rare disease known as HLH. Ashoff's fiance said in her Twitter post that pneumonia and non-Hodgkin's 
could trigger HLH, which is what may have happened in the case of Mr. Ashwell. One of the most genuine and best people you would ever meet. That's how Carroll County is remembering Sergeant Lee Maxwell. In a post on Facebook, the sheriff says Maxwell died early this morning after a prolonged illness. Sergeant Maxwell joined the Carroll County Sheriff's Office in 1994, working with several units over the years. Most recently, he was sergeant over the school resource officer division, serving Mount Zion schools. The sheriff calls his passing, quote, a tremendous loss for the community. We are enjoying a dry night out there tonight. A few clouds are around the area, but those clouds aren't producing rain yet. We're tracking this system out to the west. I'll let you know when it's going to get here and what part of the weekend it'll impact. Governor Kemp says educators deserve another pay raise. How much money teachers could soon be earning? Down to sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory, hyper local. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts has taken his place as judge in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Senators walked up in groups of four to give their oath to do, quote, impartial justice. They will be acting as jurors. This is all after they heard the two articles of impeachment read aloud yesterday. President Trump solicited the interference of a foreign government, Ukraine, in the 2020 United States presidential election. It was a ceremonial start to the trial, but the work starts Tuesday with opening statements. Senators still have to decide whether to allow new documents and witnesses into the trial. And there are some signs the investigative work is far from over after a new report from the Government Accountability Office determined the president broke the law by withholding aid and money from Ukraine. At the state capitol, Governor Kemp says he plans to give school teachers another raise. He did not mention tax cuts or how the state might fix a revenue shortfall that could make those teacher raises problematic. This came during the governor's annual state of the state speech today. Here's 11 Alive's Doug Richards. The governor mostly steered clear of divisive issues. He did briefly mention the state's controversial heartbeat abortion law passed last year, but he used it to launch into a crowd-pleasing pitch to change the state's adoption laws. As a pro-life governor, I believe we need to protect the unborn, and the born. Governor Kemp says he wants to make it easier for Georgians to adopt children, tripling an adoption tax credit to $6,000 for parents willing to adopt. Kemp also called for more money for school teachers, pitching a $2,000 raise for all public school teachers on top of a raise approved last year. Let's give our educators another well-deserved pay raise. He's made the promise. It is up to the rest of our politicians across the state to stand behind that and value public education as much as he has shown that he does. 
Former Governor Nathan Deal was among the luminaries in the audience for Kemp's speech, along with Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Senator Johnny Isaacson. Retired Senator Johnny Isaacson was also in attendance. The governor promised to create a Parkinson's disease research project at UGA in Isaacson's name. Kemp also backed a cause at the Capitol to eliminate surprise medical billing for out-of-network treatment. Democrats said they'd back that effort, but also called it insufficient to help Georgians lacking health care insurance. The answer was full Medicaid expansion, and we have not done that and have not shown that we're going to be a willingness to do that. And so the concern is that we're actually just providing a Band-Aid on a very serious health concern that are facing all of our Georgians. The governor did not mention the film industry or the state's generous tax credits, which have come under fire from two state audits released in the last week or so. All right, here we are. We're getting ready for the weekend. We're not that far away. And uh, looks like warmer temperatures are, are here for a while. Is that correct? Well, warm today, but we're going to start cooling down. You know, we got up to 65 today. Yesterday was 72. So today was a little cooler and then tomorrow is going to be a little cooler again with those temperatures that'll be in the 50s, but we're going to see some clouds around and then eventually the rain. But look at radar right now. No rain in our area. Let me show you the system that we're watching. It is out to the west and it's just a little bit of light rain through parts of Alabama and Mississippi that's falling apart. Really, the main part of the system is well out to the west. And you can see that here through parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Behind that, it turns into winter weather. We're not going to worry about winter weather here in the Atlanta area, but it's just going to be the rain that'll move in here uh, during the day on Saturday. And then those temperatures get really cold behind the system next week. Here's what we're watching out there right now. You can see these temperatures around North Georgia at this hour are at 52 degrees. That's after that high today of 65, cooling down a little more on the north side, more lower 50s, even some 40s around like Gainesville, Blairsville and Clayton in the 40s. But over to the east and south of us, it's a little milder, 54 in Thomaston, 53 over in Athens. And for the next 12 hours, we'll watch these temperatures as they cool off. And folks, this is going to be a lot cooler in the morning than what we've had lately. You know, it's been so mild in the mornings lately with the rain, moisture, fog, clouds around. Well, we're going to get down to around 39 to 40 degrees in the morning and then uh, around uh, 10 o'clock, 44. We will see a few more of those clouds around. So here's what we're watching on the wasometer. Our scale from 1 to 11, where 11 is a perfect day. Getting up to 55, a 9 on the wasometer, and a few more clouds that'll be mixing in with the sunshine. Now, I'm going to time out for you when we're going to see the rain. And while I'm doing that, there's going to be a QR code here at the bottom of your screen. And what I want you to do is take your phone camera, hold it up to that QR code or point it at that QR code, and it will take you to where you need to go to download our 11 Alive app. And that app will be valuable to you this weekend if you're out and about. You can look at the radar on there and see this rain as it moves our way. In fact, we're watching those clouds that are moving in tonight. In the morning, we'll have some clouds around. Lunchtime, some clouds. There will be some sunshine breaking through at times, and these clouds won't give us any rain. So on your app on Saturday, you can watch radar as these showers move in. Now, I want you to see this here. This is the freezing line uh, for Saturday morning. And as some of this moisture moves in on Saturday and that moisture hits that colder air up in the mountains throughout the morning hours on Saturday into around lunchtime, we may see a little bit of sleet mixing in with that. At this point, we don't think it's going to be a big deal or cause any major problems, but just don't be aware if you see some sleet mixing in uh, on Saturday and then that warms up. All of us will see the showers, the better chance for showers in the afternoon hours and into the evening hours. And then by 10 o'clock Saturday, a lot of that rain is down to the south. Now this is going to be general rain. We don't expect any thunderstorms with this. Maybe a rumble of thunder or two down to the south, but I don't expect any of that here. No severe weather either. And then as this moves out, that sets the stage for much colder air to start moving in here on Sunday. We'll be feeling that next week too. Generally, rainfall amounts around most of the area will be less than a half inch. There might be a couple of pockets like where you see this blue where we can see a half inch to maybe an inch and a half in some localized areas on Saturday. So 55 for a high Friday, a few clouds around mixing in with that sunshine. The rain chance higher on Saturday. Then Sunday we clear out and we start cooling off 51 for a high. And then look at that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, lows in the 20s, highs in the 40s in the afternoon. We're back to the lower 50s on Thursday and just a really low rain chance Thursday. I think that'll go up a little more next Friday. Hey, we want to show you our weather wow moment of the day. And I know this looks like just a regular old blue sky, but after what we've been dealing with, this is a wow moment. Finally, some sunshine out there. This is from 11 Alive Storm Tracker Blake Robb in Carrollton. He took these pictures of that blue sky 
over the trees. Blake often gets his drone out to take some great pictures for us. We want to see your weather wow moments. The easiest way to share those to us is from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers Facebook group. Uh, just go on Facebook, search at the top bar there, 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member of our group. We'll, uh, we'll approve you for that. And then you can be a part of our exclusive weather community, sharing pictures, videos, and getting great weather information. I'm Francesca Amaker with the A Scene Atlanta Sisters, Chloe and Hallie. They are teasing some new music. I got the details on all that coming up. Highlight film Hawks Dominique Wilkins. Some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. And Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with me. Go on and try to tear me down. I will be rising from the Demi Lovato will sing the national anthem at next month's Super Bowl in Miami. She made the announcement on Instagram. This is a big girl power lineup for Super Bowl 54. J-Lo and Shakira are taking on the halftime show. And for Lovato, this is a really big step. This month she will perform live for the first time since she was hospitalized for an overdose in 2018. She'll sing at the 2020 Grammy Awards on January 26th. She's joining the ranks of Gladys Knight, who sang the anthem at the last Super Bowl here in Atlanta. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Thursday's edition of the A-Scene, and they are the stars in the Freeform series called Grownish, and they went to my alma mater, Kittredge Magnet School. I am talking about these Atlanta sisters, Chloe and Halle Bailey, teasing new music dropping this year, and it all went down in an interview with the magazine Pop Sugar. The sisters say their next album, Ungodly Hour, is dropping later this year. They say the name actually came from a recording session with a musical duo of brothers. Now, Halle says this album is more grown and sexy and darker. Ooh. And Chloe says their new music sounds like it belongs on an episode of HBO's Euphoria. Now, we don't know the exact release date yet, but you can see them tonight on Grownish, which premieres tonight. And finally, look who is the DJ for the Atlanta Braves upcoming Chop Fest Gala. Jermaine Dupree taking to his Twitter to announce the big news. Presented by Northside Hospital, the gala actually raises funds for various community organizations. It goes down at the Coca-Cola Roxy on January 24th. 
All right, Jeff, it is always an honor and a privilege to be here amongst you. I always enjoy go. your company so much. I want to give you a formal invitation. Now, I don't offer this to everyone, okay. but my invitation is a simple one. It is heartfelt. It is from my very soul. Would you stay another 30 minutes? I humbly decline. Good night. We'll see you on Up Late at 11. Coming up, <laughs> delayed only two months from the presidential primary. New election machines are being pushed back another week. The potential impact is coming up next. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are <laughs> fun. They're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic. Planned Parenthood is putting more than money into this year's election. The group says a lot is at stake, but the money is not going to Georgia. And that might be surprising to some because Georgia is one of nine states that last year passed laws restricting abortion. Georgia's new abortion law is in limbo right now in the courts. It bans abortions once a fetal heartbeat can be detected. Usually that begins at about six weeks. But of the $45 million that Planned Parenthood plans to spend this year, the majority is going to nine key states, and we're not one of them. None of those states passed abortion restrictions in 2019. That decision, they say, is strategic. Planned Parenthood's We Decide 2020 initiative has selected states where pro-life politicians are vulnerable. For example, in Arizona, Republican Senator Martha McSally is in a tight race 
against the Democrat Mark Kelly. McSally was appointed to the set in 2018. And other states on that list, Colorado and North Carolina, have Republican incumbents who will not know their Democratic challengers until the primaries. So Planned Parenthood is focusing money on races that have a chance of getting Democrats additional seats in the Senate. But a representative tells us it is just the beginning and that Planned Parenthood supporters will be working in all 50 states, including Georgia, leading up to the 2020 election. The delivery of new voting machines delayed, pushing back by more than a week. And that is another week closer than uh, when the early voting has to start in the Georgia presidential primary. That is six weeks from now. Here's 11 Alive's Doug Richards at the Capitol with more on why it is taking so long and why it matters. State officials revealed the new timeline in court documents. They tell us that the later deliveries are not expected to impact early voting in the March presidential primary. When they delivered scores of new voting machines to a DeKalb County warehouse last month, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger said all 159 Georgia counties would have their new machines by February 8th. Now the state says the counties will get their new machines by mid-February, one week closer to the start of early voting for the March presidential primary. We feel really good about where we're at. Gabriel Sterling is managing the rollout for the Secretary of State's office. Sterling says the state is delivering 33,000 voting machines, plus 33,000 matching printers, 15,000 battery backups, and 8,000 voter check-in poll pads, all going to 159 counties. It is, Sterling says, a logistical challenge that he says the office will meet. Like we were supposed to get a truck of screens yesterday, they didn't show up, they showed up today. That's the kind of thing when you do implementation with this many moving parts and third party the logistics and everything else that goes along with it, and you're coordinating with 159 counties. Sterling says Fulton County was supposed to get its new voting machines this week. Fulton is scheduled to get them next week. Sterling says he expects this voting machine drama to be all but forgotten by the time early voting starts in the presidential primary. He says on all new machines on March 2nd. Questions about the security of Georgia's elections persist despite the move these new electronic voting machines bring. Now, last month we told you about a petition to change the rules for the upcoming elections and allow Georgia counties to use paper ballots if they prefer. Activists also want voters to be able to submit mail-in absentee ballots in person. And new tonight, a computer security expert says a Georgia server at the center of a legal battle over the election results is showing evidence of tampering. In 2016, it was discovered the server was left exposed open to the internet for at least six months. In July of 2017, the server was wiped clean just after a voter advocacy group filed a lawsuit seeking an overhaul of the state's election system. This is all involved over the fight of Georgia's sixth con uh, congressional district runoff. A sudden spike in anti-Semitic terrorist type attacks in the Northeast and for that matter all around the country have the Jewish community on edge in every big city in America and every medium sized city and for that matter small communities as well. Here in Metro Atlanta there's been a dramatic call for Jewish unity and solidarity. 11 Allies Bill Liss and photojournalist Charles Holmes met with two of Atlanta's leading religious leaders for deeper insight into what lies ahead. For more than 110,000 Jewish residents in Metro Atlanta, the reality of shootings at a Pittsburgh synagogue, attacks inside a Jewish store in Jersey City, and stabbings inside a private home in Muncie, New York. Do you feel bad at all? Where the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah was being celebrated was shocking. I think that the timing of our service this year is going to be remarkable. Chief Rabbi Peter Berg of Atlanta's largest synagogue, the Temple, was concise. We can't let a few people who hate, we can't let uh, terrorists uh, control the day. <laughs> And it wasn't long before the Atlanta Jewish community organized a major rally in Sandy Springs to show solidarity and a determined resolve to express their faith. For many Jewish people in Metro Atlanta, anti-Semitic acts are an abstract thought, but in fact, it's an Atlanta reality. Jaron Lino is a senior at Riverwood just, High School. I have experienced anti-Semitism myself in school and Anywhere I've gone, I've experienced it. Rabbi Berg says many Jewish students have been continually singled out with religious slurs. There's hardly a school 
in the metro area that our students go to that I have not been to this year to meet with the principals or the teachers to talk about kids from our congregation and community. It's an issue, says Rabbi Berg, that requires everyone in the community taking a positive role. We have many partners in the community. Um, we do so much work, for example, with the African American community, and there's such racism that's prominent as well. So we support each other, and uh, we, we stand up and say hatred, all hatred is terrible. It's an effort strongly supported by the Reverend Raphael Warnock, pastor of Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. Whenever bigotry rears its ugly head, whether it's in a synagogue or a church, whether it is a religious bigotry uh, or racism or any form of xenophobia, I think we have to recognize the ways in which none of us are safe and we have to stand up uh, and speak on behalf of whoever, whomever uh, is on the receiving end uh, of that bigotry. And on Friday night, a significant number of Atlantas will speak out. Two of Atlanta's largest religious congregations, Jewish and Baptist, joining together here at the temple over the MLK weekend to show solidarity against racial and religious intolerance and to continue a dialogue to end the cycle of bigotry. It's a yearly event that brings together the temple community with the Ebenezer Baptist Church community in joint prayer, solidarity, and commitment. Uh, you're going to see a rabbi and a minister stand up together to say that all forms of hatred, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, bigotry, anti-Semitism, all are unacceptable, and we will not stand idly by. Every time we get together, the temple and Ebenezer Baptist Church, it is its own act of living resistance against racism and anti-Semitism. And I think that service empowers, inspires, and encourages a lot of people uh, to keep on keeping on. It certainly inspires me. Bill, it's so good to see this. I'm curious what's being done to bring unity in the greater Atlanta community beyond Ebenezer and the Temple. Well, the rabbi, for one thing, has been speaking at the mosques. It happened earlier this year when there was an incident with a Muslim shooting somewhere else in the country. And Reverend Warnock has told me the same thing. He often gets together with the church and with the Muslim community and talks to them. So there's a great unity going on between the Jewish community, the African-American community, and the Muslim mm -hmm. community to promote, as you just said, that feeling of great unity within Atlanta. And this joint service tomorrow night, everyone has a chance to be a part of it. Absolutely. The wonderful part about that, folks, we are going to be streaming that service on our 11 Alive website tomorrow night. It will be live, starts at 8 o'clock at the Temple. It will also be available if you have a, an app on your phone, you'll be able to watch the whole thing. So all kinds of people can be able to watch it, and we think it will be community-wide. Perfect. Billis, thank you so much. Okay. There was a push to honor Congressman John Lewis by renaming the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, that's one of the top three things that we are following right now on this Thursday night. It's an online petition urging Alabama lawmakers to rename the Edmund Pettus Bridge, where Congressman Lewis and the Reverend Hosea Williams and hundreds others marched in Selma on Bloody Sunday, 1965. Many demonstrators, including the Congressman and Hosea Williams, were violently beaten by state troopers during the Stop the Voting Rights March. There's nearly 5,000 signatures calling for the change online. The Hall County Sheriff's Office says the death of a married couple, it was murder and suicide. An autopsy from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation shows that Tai Yang shot his wife Minka on January 4th before taking his own life. Two of the couple's sons were inside the home on Little Doe Walk at the time, and my goodness, they are 16 and 20, and now they have to, to go forward. Their grandmother was also inside. The Sheriff's Office is still working to finish its investigation of this tragedy. A teen accused in shooting at Cumberland Mall, staying in jail, picking up a new charge. His name, Zaire Dalula, uh, was already facing two felony charges for a shooting in the mall's food court in December that sent choppers running and scurrying for safety. One person shot in the neck and shoulder. He is okay. In court yesterday, the judge denied the young man bond and tacked on a misdemeanor charge. The other teen accused in this case is named Joeir Ponce, and he is out on bond. A pilot's decision to dump fuel over schools in neighborhoods in Los Angeles earlier this week during a flight emergency, really getting a lot of attention, a lot of scrutiny. 
Parents in the FAA now demanding more answers after it was revealed the crew never warned air traffic control. The FAA says they would have directed the plane to an appropriate fuel dumping area, like maybe the Pacific Ocean. Nobody was seriously hurt, but some of those kids were hit by jet fuel and they complained of skin irritation. Bankhead Seafood was a community staple. It was reportedly the longest running business in Bankhead and then it closed quickly in 2018. But now two well-known Atlantans are doing whatever they can do to bring this iconic restaurant back. Killer Mike announced the news via Instagram that he's proud to bring the restaurant back along with TI. The Bankhead Seafood unexpectedly shut down in 2018. They'd been there 50 years. The owners had, had grown older and they simply didn't have the strength to keep on going. It's not clear when Killer Mike and TI will reopen it, but there are reports saying it's going to be a big restaurant expected to seat over 100 people. Well, as they see the walls of smoke and fire, many people feel there isn't much you can do to help the suffering wildlife in Australia. What a horrible story. But one hairstylist in Metro Atlanta is doing her part. I just shared a story on my Facebook page where some parts of Australia are getting so much rain, they're having to relocate some animals there because of flooding in some areas. We don't have anything like that here in our area. In fact, we're drying out tomorrow before the next round of rain moves in. That'll impact part of your weekend. Georgia State's a pretty good basketball team, one of the better offensive teams anywhere in the country. Could the Panthers find enough offense on the road? Against South Alabama, highlights coming up in our sports segment. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me when I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the No, 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 You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I You're consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs>
It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world. Lawmakers took an oath this afternoon swearing to be impartial ahead of next week's highly anticipated impeachment trial in the Senate. But tonight, there are new revelations and allegations against the president and his involvement in the situation in Ukraine. Here's NBC's Jay Gray. A powerful new report from the Government Accountability Office indicates the White House broke the law by freezing military aid to Ukraine. The president's order to withhold nearly $400 million in aid as he asked Ukrainian officials to investigate his political rivals is at the heart of the ongoing impeachment. President Trump knew exactly what was going on. In an interview with MSNBC's Rachel Maddow, Lev Parnas, an associate of the president's personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani, says he was at the center of an effort to dig up dirt on Joe Biden and his son in Ukraine. This is a, an example of all of the president's henchmen. Arrested on campaign finance charges late last year. He's trying to probably make a deal for himself. I don't even know who this man is. Parnas is now cooperating with House impeachment investigators, handing over phone records and messages, including this handwritten note to get Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky to announce that the Biden case will be investigated, and a text message exchange with an associate highlighting the push to oust the Ukrainian ambassador at the time, Marie Ivanovich, suggesting she was under surveillance by private security, allegations now being investigated by police in Ukraine. It is going to take help from people all over the world for Australia to recover. A hairstylist in Metro Atlanta wants to do her part. Her shop is raising funds for brush fire relief. Cuts for Koalas is a haircutting drive created by East Point stylist Haley Jonet. The shop is offering a discounted rate. 50% of the price will go toward charity. Ms. Jonet was inspired to create the fundraiser after learning about the devastation happening overseas. Upon learning about the fires in Australia and everything, being here, not having a lot of money to help, um, feeling really small about it, anything that you can donate will help people appreciate it. I've got friends over in Australia that are appreciative of everything that people are doing. The fundraising drive will continue Saturday at the Wayward Parlor. That's in East Point. Pretty nice day out there today. Temperatures up to the mid 60s. We had some sunshine come through, no rain around, a chance to dry out a little bit after all the rain that we've been dealing with. And right now it is still dry. Our radar scanning the sky here, not picking up any raindrops around, although we do have a few clouds around. Uh, you can see some of the showers that we were watching earlier in Mississippi and Alabama. Those are falling apart. There's really not a big push for this moisture to move our way. And that's really not going to get here until we get into Saturday when we're going to see those showers move our way. So even though you see those showers out to our west, it's still going to take a little while before they get here. Look at these temperatures today, 65. Our low this morning was 55. Now the average for this time of year, of what we should have in the afternoon is 52. The average morning temperature is around 34 degrees. So we were still above average today, but not as hot as we were yesterday when we got up to 72. That was near a record. We picked up uh, about 6100 seven inch of rain since midnight. Our surplus now is about four and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So we just showed you how those temperatures have been above average. They were above average today and we're finally going to see colder air moving in that will eventually get us back to below average temperatures. So mild air has been in place here in the south and the cold air has been bottled up to the north and we're going to stay mild the next couple of days tomorrow in the 50s kind of comfortable 50s again on Saturday with some rain that's moving into our area. Then that cold air up to the north after this rain moves out on Saturday, the cold air is going to start to dive down into our area and we'll begin to feel that some 
on Sunday with highs in the lower 50s right around 51 degrees and then that colder air keeps moving down and with clearing skies Sunday in the Monday morning. We're going to start off with temperatures around 29 and highs only in the 40s here on Monday. This sticks with us as well. On Tuesday, lows in the 20s, highs in the 40s, same thing for Wednesday. And then eventually, once we get into Thursday and Friday at the end of the week, the colder air starts to retreat and we'll see the milder air coming back. And when I say milder, I'm just talking about going from below average temperatures back to average and maybe a little bit above that once we get toward the end of the week next week. And a chance for some more moisture to return by the end of the week too. Now we really don't need any more rain. Uh, we do not have any drought conditions here. As I mentioned, the rain surplus is four inches, four and a half inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. And we really haven't had any drought conditions for a few weeks. And with all this rain that we've been dealing with lately, it just kind of keeps that going here. If you're looking for abnormally dry weather conditions, that is down in parts of southwest Georgia and in the Florida Panhandle where they have a moderate drought. But we do not have drought here. <laughs> I know that's no surprise to you that that new drought update came in today. So I wanted to share it with you. Dry tomorrow, cool 55. And then Saturday uh, showers come in 54 clearing out Sunday with a high of 51 and then we go back to the 20s in the mornings Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday highs in the 40s back to the low 50s Thursday with only a 20% chance for a shower late. The Hawks have traded for a backup point guard and it's someone we all know pretty well. Jeff Teague will be returning to the Hawks after being traded away in 2016. If that's a trend, it's a good one. Bring back John Drew and Tree Rollins. Bring those guys back too. Tig is in the last year of his current contract. The biggest story in sports right now, the cheating scandal in Major League Baseball. The investigation revealed on Monday the Astros used technology to cheat during their championship season in 2017. More details of that are coming out. You know, now you're talking about a buzzer in jerseys that they are learning pitch counts that way. We'll see how truthful that is. There are some evidence of it uh, on, on videotape. I'll let you determine that. It's on my Facebook page right now, Jeff Hullinger, 11 Alive. But you know what, if that's true, if that's true, this is the biggest crisis for baseball in decades, maybe going back to 1919 and the Black Sox scandal with fixing games. I mean, if you're cheating to this degree, it really puts at risk the integrity of everything that goes on. I think it's more significant, more important, and more troubling than the steroids. Uh, I mean, the credibility of baseball is at stake here. The commissioner's got some work ahead of them. They've got to find out a lot of answers. There are a lot of questions, but I'll tell you what, this is a heck of a way to go into spring training with this hanging over baseball. You know, unacceptable. And these guys ought to vacate their World Series title if they are found to be involved in any more of these shenanigans. Georgia State on the road at South Alabama tonight. The Panthers going for their third straight win. They have struggled on the road. No problems tonight from Justin Roberts. He went 6 for 11 from three. He had 20. The Panthers earned the win 72-63, a strong offensive team. I remember in fifth grade, I remember I was watching the Lakers Celtics on one of the national networks, and I remember turning to my dad and saying, if I want to stay involved in the game of basketball, and if I can't play in the NBA, I say the next best thing to playing is coaching. It keeps you in the game, the adrenaline game. rush, everything with, you know, involved. And really since that time in fifth grade, I put all my energies towards coaching. Watching Josh Pastner, a very charismatic, charming guy, very interesting stories you will want to hear and he is a recent guest on the look alive podcast that you can download you can subscribe check it out wherever you are mr glay is doing a very nice job They're very interesting very insightful check it out more subscribe to 11 alive today you didn't get my text the whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, okay. yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay, yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. 
everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest. That is it for us tonight. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. See you tomorrow right here on the Big 36, where news is king. For a limited time, All Good will buy back your old inefficient HVAC system when we take up to $1,750 off your new heating and cooling system purchase. Visit callallgood.com. All Good Services. Callallgood.com. At Beaver Toyota, we have a vehicle for everyone. Hundreds of pre-owned and certified Toyotas. Plus, we carry Honda, Nissan, Ford, Chevy, and Kia. We have what you're looking for, even vehicles as low as $59.95. Looking for a new car? No problem. Take a look at our huge selection of Highlanders, Tacomas, and the all-new RAV4. Did I mention all these come with a lifetime warranty and oil changes? At Beaver Toyota, if we don't have it, they don't make it. Come check out the all-new Beaver Toyota upcoming. Furnace breakdown? Oh no! That could be a $3,300 bill you weren't expecting. Fridge on the fritz? Ah, oh, that could cost you $2,500. Get the First American Home Warranty Plan. And when a covered item breaks, call or click. That's it. And we'll repair or replace it for you. We have plans that cover air conditioning, most appliances, plus heating, plumbing, electrical systems, and much more. Plans start as low as $25 a month. Why let a major system or appliance breakdown bust your budget or go through the hassle of trying to find trustworthy service people? Saved us thousands of dollars. And I know they have my back. Last year alone, we saved our customers over $140 million. Don't wait until it's too late. And you're stuck with a huge repair bill. If you don't have First American Warranty, get it. Call 1-866-240-8350 or visit protectmybudget.com for a free no-obligation quote. That's 1-866-240-8350. Do you use sleep equipment? Did you know manufacturers recommend that you wash it every day using soap and water? What a hassle. That's a lot of work. Fortunately, there's an easy option. SoClean is the fast and simple way to maintain your sleep equipment. With SoClean, all you need to do is put your equipment in, close the lid, and walk away. Just one touch, and SoClean does all the work for you. SoClean saves you time, and it saves you hassle. 
Plus, you have the peace of mind that your sleep equipment is maintained every day. You can try SoClean risk-free for 30 nights. Even shipping is free. It's HSA and FSA approved and payment plans are available. Call 1-800-568-9841 or go to SoClean.com to take advantage of this risk-free trial. Call 1-800-568-9841 now. So fast, so easy, so clean. The last thing you want is a cold home. If that happens, call All Good Plumbing, Electric, Heating, and Cooling. For a limited time, we'll take $50 off any heating or cooling system repair. All Good 